clean back nice. Big extension for that. Live? Uh, Claim for live. Are we live? Can't see. It says we're live. Hello? Hey. We're live. Hanging out. Nice thing, yeah. Do I put it on Twitter too? Brady House. What's up, people? Four or five, four viewers. Woo! We got a dog here. Mark's me watching South Carolina, popping in and out. Talk about prospects, chilling. Which is this? This is the mouse. That's the mouse. That's the one on the middle screen. Okay, and the other one's the other screen. Okay, chilling. Brady House. Brady House is kind of fun. Brady House had a really good year last year. I don't think anyone really talked about it because he lost all the prospect shine. But oh, that was a V. Fastball goes low for him. I wish you'd keep that high. On YouTube, swipe up or whatever. Click the link to find out. We're watching the spring breakout game. Yo. What's up? Brandon, what's up, Brandon? What's up, Kevin? We're hanging out. Hanging, hanging. We got a dog back here. Can you guys see the dog? Mojo. 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 You're famous. Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. Now he's not barking. Yeah, now you're calm. Now you see him in the corner a little bit, though. That fastball from Dom Hamill is crazy. Apparently, that like 97, 98 is new. But he's got great life on it. He's got like 18, 19 IVB. If that's up in the zone, I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't have more hype as like a better prospect. That fastball is legit as fuck. Oh, let's see. I got crazy notes on Dom Hamill too. He also likes Dom guys, not Dominic. Call him Dom, not Dominic. Yeah, he said that in an interview I saw this week. He talked about it. He also calls uh, Steve Cohen Papa Cohen, which is which is really hilarious. Because he was like, he, him and Calvin Ziegler were the first guys in like the Steve Cohen era that were drafted, which I think is kind of interesting. That was when the Mets changed from being like, we're going to draft guys based on their college stats to like, we're going to draft guys based on their pitch traits. We're live on YouTube. Click the link. Advertising Mark. Woo! James is going. I'll be joining. Let's go Mets. Let's go Mets, baby. What else? Yeah. I got some... He was Dallas Baptist. You know Dom Hamill's Dallas Baptist guy? Yes. Yeah. Dallas Baptist. He's also like 25, so he's like older for a prospect. It took him a while to get going because he came in as a pro college prospect from a lower thing, but they worked on his fastball. Now he has the slider and the curveball. I want to see if he's throwing a curveball here, 0-2 pitch, because that curveball is no. Oh, more fastballs. High fastball. Let's see it. Oh. Good by Johandi to get a piece of that, but he, oh, he can't see it. <laughs> Drew. Drew. Nice one, Drew. Easy inning for Dom Hamill. Love that from Dom Hamill. Oh, my God. He's a Dom, and you call Steve Daddy. Now nah, don't don't get crazy on me here. That's not it. He calls Steve Papa, and he is Dom. Yeah, he's a Dom. He's also got major vibes too, Dom Hamill. Like if you've seen him do the interviews, he has the tat sleeve. Like he's a dog on the mound. Like he pitches with a lot of emotion. Mark and I saw him last year in Binghamton's uh, clinching game against the Somerset. That was Somerset Patriots, right? Yeah, Somerset Patriots in the uh, Eastern League Finals or semifinals, whatever it was. And he he pitched into the eighth inning. He was like screaming after strikeouts. Like he was talking shit on the mound. Like there was clear that he has like he has a vibe to him. Like he has an edge that he wants and he uses on the mound, which is pretty cool. We got it all. College stats should directly translate to MLB success. Not really, because college stats, especially if you guy like Tom Hamill's at Dallas Baptist, like what you're doing in college, you're gonna be facing guys who maybe 0.5% of them are going to actually wind up in the major leagues. So it's really just about like having pitches that they think are going to grade out and get good enough to get major league hitters out. Which, again, Dom Hamill has that with his fastball, has that with his curveball, and has that with his slider. He's like between Christian Scott and Mike Vassell, where Scott has the best stuff, but he has probably the biggest workload concerns because he was just a reliever two years ago. Type out to you right now. All right. Uh, uh, We're live watching the hashtag. You guys seen the sausage get made right now? <laughs> it's a commercial break. Yeah, we're hanging. We relate to this anyway. It's college basketball. Dude, they, so S and Y tweeted out three. MLB tweeted out 320. Yeah. I mean, we know MLB not really good at promoting their stuff, and even S and Y, some of the camera angles are kind of weird there, and they only got like Duke and Gary Apple doing this game anyway. So come live, come hang out, watch with us. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Is, is the link in this tweet already? Oh, it's just the picture. Yeah, it's just the picture. Yeah, send me. What is it? How, how do I get the link? Uh, I guess. First time going live on YouTube. I don't know what's going on. Brandon's currently 1.1 miles away from Clover Park. I mean, nice. Get over there, dude. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? 
Close that mile. Zero reason we should be allowed to be live right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, on this on this account. Yeah. Yeah, we. I don't know how Mark did it. He like got totally around YouTube rules. We're supposed to have cleared going live twenty four hours first on the channel, but we did not. So whatever. Link. Link and then commit me. Yeah. Edit your Mac. Edit your Mac. Post. I'll quote to you from this mic from my account too. But yeah, two strikeouts first inning for Don Hamble. That's amazing. And again, that fastball like. Oh, two strikeouts. Yeah, I strikeouts. James Wood looking. Oh, nice. That's what I'm saying. And we missed the Cruz at bat, but Cruz got on. I don't know if it was a hit or not. Someone in the chat, let me know if Cruz got on with a hit or whatever. Oh, we already missed it. Oh, God, we missed Jet Williams get out already? Damn it. <laughs> Whatever. Drew Gilbert. Love Drew Gilbert. Number one, my number one prospect in the medic system. Non-competitive at bat from Jet. Yeah, Jackson Rudd, I mean, that, that Jet, I don't know. Lipscomb's playing short. Interesting. He was a third baseman in college. That's not how it works. It's Trey Lipscomb, right? Yeah. yeah. Tennessee. I'm going to lower this. I don't want to hear Jim Duquette very much. But Drew Gilbert, to me, also just smells like such like an old school two-hitter. Seeing some pitches here. Nice tight strike zone. Hey, Grant. Cutie. Yeah, Jet K. That's a shame. But, I don't know. Jet has a lot of strikeout in his game. That's kind of the fear with Jet and why, me personally, I have Drew ranked ahead of Jet as a prospect. It's because just... Oh, no. The stream just died. Where's the game, Mark? All right. Jet just, like... I, I get scared... Oh, it was back. I get scared of, the of minor league walk rates because so many of those pitchers are just so not good that if you have any kind of eye whatsoever, and oh my god, the stream keeps dying. What's going on? Oh, he's just we're back, we're back. If you have any kind of eye whatsoever, and pitchers are a little bit scared of you, like they should be of Jet Williams, they will just pitch around you, and then you just take if you just don't don't swing, that you'll just have a walk rate. But Jet does have some K rate issues. I, that's why I really want to see Jet at Double A this year. I'm really excited to see Jet Williams Double A. But Drew, we just saw him hit the shit out of Double A, and I'm not worried about that at all. Now we're just kind of waiting for him to get to the major leagues. Ah, it's just like a forty-man roster thing right now for Drew Gilbert, which is like kind of annoying. But also, he still probably has to prove himself a little bit in Double and Triple A. But I mean, since that trade last year, because he had a wrist injury that kind of hurt him early in the year for the um. Oh, come on, Drew. Ah, pop up for Drew. Oh my God, James will just James will just drop the fly ball. And hustle, Drew Gilbert, second base. That's a double in the books. But, yeah, it looks like right, Sun and right field is kind of an issue right now because that was Drew, Drew Gilbert messed one up there last inning too. But he was so good when he got to the Mets last year. He had a wrist injury that hurt him a lot when he was in high A and double A with the, um, with the Astros. But, oh, that Mojo's making some noise. He's letting himself be heard. Mojo, Mojo, Mojo. Oh, you got 17 minutes of the Cox. You watch a whole inning. Grab a chair. Yeah, grab a chair. Hang out. Ugh. That's funny. Yeah, it kind of sucks for James Wilkes. He's like actively trying to make this team too, so that's kind of a shame. Luis, all right, Luis on Helicuña. This is this is it. Yeah, that's that's Luis on Helicuña, guys. He just loves to swing. He's in third, huh? Yeah, I thought that was weird. And starting it short. Huh. Yeah, they're uh, he's the he's the guy with the pub. Like he's the guy. I mean, don't forget but, this is a showcase. The, the yeah. trade guys too. Yeah, that's true. This is a showcase. Worst case scenario, it's a showcase. Oh man, but that swing and miss. And just, he gets on top of everything, too. It's just there's, when he finds them, he finds them. But there's just something a little off in his approach right now. And he is Ronald Acuna's brother. And Acuna was like this for a while. Like, Acuna's bigger than him. I think he's like, what, four inches bigger than him, too? But, like, he was a free swinger a couple years ago. People kind of forget that. And he hit this new level when he became this guy who, like, kind of took his pitches more, stopped swinging the breaking balls below the zone. That's what changed the game for Acuna. Oh, is that Ronnie Darling right behind the plate? That's so funny. He was, on, he was sitting on the hill with his son. That yeah, look, that's amazing. When we were at the game. It's a young son for Ron Darling. Oh, yeah. That's a young... New wife. That's a young. Hey, Bella. Hey, girlies. What's going on? Hey, girlies. That's funny. Yo, Jenny, appreciate the retweet. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. Oh, uh, yeah, so... Does the, does the I even translate if you have an auto strike? No, I don't think so. Does Angel Hernandez do in this Bro. game? Whoa. Hey! What the hell? Just catch it. It's a showcase for everybody. I don't even know who's possibly catching this game for the Nationals. Why is Darren Baker playing? That's uh, Dusty's kid, right? Yeah. Buckeyes beating Illinois. Buckeyes are definitely beating Illinois today. Hell yeah, Sam. They are. Huge game at six. I got blessed that the Buckeyes are playing at six, and Mark has Gamecocks playing at three, so he, can't re he has to have one eye on each game, but I'm jacked up for Buckeye line eye today. You know, those games are only seven innings? Yeah. I, they didn't mention none of that. Well, last night, the game ended in seven innings. I know, I'm saying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know before it ended, but yeah. I know now that it is seven game innings. Ended in the seventh. What the fuck? You called me by my name, Mark. All right, Grant. Whatever. I guess Ronnie's, yeah, I think Ronnie probably is doing the game tonight, I guess. I, 
It'd be nice if those guys were doing this game. I feel like they're such old timers, they care so little about prospects, which is kind of hilarious. There's no reason for them to know about them. No, there really isn't. Until it happens. I just would have like, thought, like, SNY, they've been like, hey, we think this game's going to be a big deal. You guys should do it. They're probably like, nah, fuck that. Probably got to pay them their raise. That's probably true. Louise! That's like a good piece. Is that out? No. Come on, ball! Ah, James Wood found that one. That was a good piece, though. Now you guys can see that raw power on Acuna, why he, like, is such an exciting prospect. Just needs to clean up. Clean up the approach a little bit. Oh, big out, big two out two RBI spot for Ryan Clifford here. Let's see him. Let's see him oh, do boy. it. He gets to not hit in fucking Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, the beach. We're hearing now too that Clifford might start the year in Brooklyn again, which would be hellish. But if he could get to get to Binghamton as a twenty-year-old, man, this guy's still the limit for him. Lucas, do the comps are ringing true? Everybody in the chat, if you have not yet subscribed, subscribe. Drop a like on the stream. We appreciate y'all. There's Mark doing YouTube stuff that he knows. Is it weird that I am from Canada and I'm a Jays fan but listen to every episode? Not weird at all. Fans of all teams should listen to the Messed Up Podcast. Everyone should, everyone should listen to the Messed Up Podcast. That's the second Jays fan from Canada that does that. Yeah, your buddy uh, with Jackson. Just Jackson, yeah. yeah. I don't know. We'll talk to we'll, talk, we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a Jays segment. Well, two, one, 20 Jays seconds every episode, maybe. If we get two, one more Jays fan. Ooh, yeah, get down, get down, get down, get down, Clifford! That's oh, okay. hell yeah, it's really good hitting. And Jackson yeah. is a major league pitcher. He is. Double, hustle, double. Ah. Little athleticism from the lumbering first baseman. Snap, snaps in the chat. Snaps in the chat. <laughs> Bella, Ryan Clifford does look like an Orioles prospect. <laughs> he is white guy with hair. Orioles prospect. He, wow. Good piece. Good hitting. If, if him and, um, who's, who's the other outfielder who that just looks just like that? He does look a lot like Gunnar Henderson, actually, which is kind of funny. A rowdy, uh... No. They have an outfielder just, who just came up. Who looked, is it Norby? Norby kind of looks like that was hair oh, long. Oh, talking about the Orioles. Yeah. Oh, uh... Might be Norby. You've got Kowser, you've got Kerstad, you've got, I'm forgetting one. Christopher, don't know much about Ryan Sto Clifford. Stowers, Kyle Stowers. Hey, Stowers. Beavers, maybe Beavers. Beavers has hair. Parada. Ah, Kev. Get out of play. play. Nah, it's way in play. Yeah. All right, Kev. But uh, Chris, Christopher, I'll tell you something about Ryan Clifford right now. We're very excited about Ryan Clifford. Clifford came, of course, with Gilbert in the Verlander trade last year. And he was kind of a shock that the Astros even wound up with him because he was a Vanderbilt commit. Usually when you're a Vanderbilt commit, like nothing gets you out of school. But the Astros dropped like a second round signing bonus on him as 11th round pick. I think it was around a million, which is kind of unheard of. And I know that having a buddy who's in the organization, they were just very excited that he actually took that deal. And they kind of like made their whole draft strategy around finding him in the late round pick and then giving guys low bonuses, taking a lot of college seniors so they can throw most of their bonus pool at Ryan Clifford. And he's like that. They were very excited about him. It was definitely very hard for them to trade him for Verlander, but they were trying to win a World Series last year. So we get that. However, however... He's got huge power. He dominated high A last year with the Astros, but they play at Asheville, which is like the highest elevation for any uh, team in that league. Then he came to Brooklyn with the Mets, which is the lowest elevation for any team in that league. It has wind off the beach. Horrible place to hit, especially for a lefty like him. So he bad stats with the Mets. Wouldn't take it that seriously, but like scouting eye, like he's a big dude. He's a baseball freak. He loves it. And the power is very, 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 very legit. I would not doubt that at all. 98 I saw. Oh, yeah. better. They said that he's been 98 in the backfields this spring. And his one appearance, he got to 97 with, like, 19 inches of IVB. He was throwing, like, 96, right, when we saw him play? Like yeah, a couple times. 95, 90. But he was always, like, a 93 to 95 guy with good life. And now the pitching lab, we're going to talk about the Mets pitching lab a lot because every single pitcher that comes in, you guys know I'm going to have a ton of shit ready to talk about them. His pitching lab's insane. We're getting a couple miles an hour on every one of these guys. And we got another inning from Dom Hamill now. I genuinely think it was the, uh... It was what? The harness. Oh, that's why I was freaking out? I think it might have been. Oh, nice. Oh, Mojo's oh, chilling now. now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we got a dog here. Mojo's going to come come on screen at some point later in this. I'm, I'm, I'm a dog watcher for 10 days. Yeah. Never had a dog in my life. Hey, we got Joe DeMeo now. Are you going to fly Joe out to Florida yeah. for this? I know. It's kind of He was there like last week, too. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It was like his thing. I'd so much rather hear Joe DeMeo talk about these guys than Jim Duquette. Jim Duquette, the guy who's made like some of the worst trades in Mets history. Yeah, in baseball. Trade Scott Casimir for... Uh... Didn't, didn't he also want to do uh, some stuff with you? He did, and then <laughs> I waited too long. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really actually know what he, what he offers besides being like, Ooh. let's go back and look at these trades and see okay. what his terrible opinion is. So that was a changeup from Dom Hamill. I know that that's something that they've been really stressing for him because with the curveball, he shouldn't be playing in this game. He's Acquire a year younger than, he's a, a year and a half younger than no, us. No, yeah, he's acquired by Jan Gomes. He hasn't been in the Nationals in years. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrible. Before the pandemic. They won the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that change for Hamill's a big deal because he rocks a curve. He's a curveball and the fastball to play against both sides, but he also has a slider that's really good against righties. But he needs that change up as another piece against lefties, which is, again, whoever this old man is at the plate right now, there's a left-handed batter. 
And Hamill got really hot last year at the end of the year for Binghamton. Like, that's kind of been his thing every year, 2022 and 23, Brooklyn and Binghamton. Something just happened to him in June where he kind of went off the end of the year, especially last year with Binghamton, August to the end. He was named Pitcher of the Month in the Eastern League in, in September once he got there. And he had like a 35% strikeout rate and a 2-2 ERA from uh, August on through the end of the year. So he just got hot there, and it came with that changeup. Started throwing it a lot more. He was getting more lefties out. And it was great. And just kind of nice to see him show one here in the second inning of work because that is a pitch that's probably the thing that will separate him from being a major league, like high impact reliever to like a guy who could be a legit starter. I still think he's a good starter because the fastball curveball slider is enough, but the changeup is the one that could really change like everything for him. Milos has the same uh, birthday as me, June 15th. No way. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, you, you guys are born a year, one two year apart, years, two, two full years, years apart. Yeah. Shout out Drew it's Milos. A breakout game. Yeah. Bella is not. Oh, oh wow. You see, there was that there was that slider they tried to throw in on him, but still, still got Drew Gilbert out Wait, there making a play. Center, right? Yeah, just playing center. Interesting. And Acuna, and, uh, Jet Center, Acuna shortstop. I, I thought they would swap those, but it makes sense. Uh, Bella's not in on Kevin Parada. That's kind of rude, Bella. You don't do. Kevin's a nice guy. Kevin. Kevin, it's, it's surprised you said that because Kevin is very popular with the ladies, very popular with the ladies. Handsome gentleman. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's got some riz. We met him last year. We were like, I was charmed. Truthfully, I don't know even know what he did. He just like smiled, and I was like, who is this guy? But yeah, who else? Milo. Any thoughts on the Mets' new black unis and hats? Any prediction of City Connect? I'll tell you, I looked at them in uh, MLB the show because I was playing last night. Yeah. Black jerseys look terrible. Really? The, the, the lack of the white. That's outline, a strike, Blue. What are you doing? They cannot challenge it. Lack of the white outline yeah. is. Rough. Yeah, I, I I hate the lack of the white outline. I don't know who decided that was a good idea. I don't know who he is. Probably but the same people who got rid of us. Yeah, <laughs> hey yo. But I bet I feel like the Mets City Connect is gonna be <laughs> something Queens related. They they love Queens, James. That's crazy. I don't know. But uh, wait, wait, what's crazy, Bella? What are you talking about? But um, no one's there. You guys hear the dog barking now? But uh, what they're talking about? The City Connect. I know, like we know the Mets. They love Queens. I feel like it's gonna be something Queens related. They're probably gonna get like a local artist to do something Queens with like a splash of orange. Blue, what are you doing? Give him, get, get the guy a break. Yeah, it's in the zone. Trey Lipscomb. Uh, Kevin's represent. Woo woo. Joe, thank you guys for streaming while I'm at work. Shout out to you, Joe, working on a Friday in March. But let's see what we got here. Dom Hamill. I got some other Dom Hamill stats I got in the Google Doc I'm going to start talking about here. Oh, he was just, he was so electric in the game we went to last year. In like a big game, a playoff game, a clincher, an eliminator against Somerset Patriots, who were, oh God, who's that? Mark's getting phone calls out here. This guy's doing business. KP's guy. He does. Kevin, look up, look up Kevin Parada, City Boy. He apparently just ran through the Southeast, the ACC. He's, you got you to gotta just keep that guy under wraps because he can't stop. But, however, Hamill, this is a big second inning for Hamill. I think he, I got some words from Joe DeMeo, friend of the show, that he was going to be the only Met that was expected to go two innings in this game, and then we'd get, ooh, not finding his strikes on right now. He might, he, might, he might get taken out here. Kevin, talk to him, Kev. Talk to him, Kev. That's your boy. Have a conversation. Relax him a little bit. It is the automatic strike zone today, but there's also no, I don't know, they're not challenging. I guess they can. I don't, I don't know enough about the automatic strike zone. I know the hitters can challenge it, but there's no real mention of what the pitchers are doing with that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not too, not too kept up with it. But this is kind of also the problem with Hamill's walks. This is the other thing that could limit him from being a starter and might make him a reliever in the long term, where he's just, he's kind of like a three, four, five walks per nine guy through the minor league levels. It's, it's his issue because it's because he throws so many breaking balls. And it's kind of hard to command them once in a while because his breaking balls have so much depth and they move so much. And the fastball is a lot of life. It's just pitches move a lot, so they're harder to command, more difficult. But I don't know. He's probably someone who, if he trusted the stuff more, I feel like if he just put it in this rack, so I don't think it'd be hit because the stuff grades and the times he's appeared in spring training, shout out TJ Stats, Thomas Nestico, have been amazing. Like major league caliber, fastball, curveball, slider. I just lean on that stuff, lean on that stuff, lean on that stuff. And... Mets little secret pitching lab is kind of making some moves here. Kev, yeah, Kev, Parada behind the plate is not. I don't know. Ouch. <laughs> that was a uh, that throw did not have any mustard on it, as the kids would say. How'd they get uh, the guy out? The lead runner. Hmm. No. Lead runner out. No, he just stole second on Parada's noodle arm. No, Milos. Oh, he lined out. Yeah, he lined out to start the inning. But um, yeah, that's kind of the thing with Parada. People still think he can hit the major league level, but it's the catching. That's why he dropped in the draft to the Mets because he seemed like he was such a sure thing, so much college production. But it's just he's not. I don't know. He doesn't really do anything very well behind the plate. He's not a great athlete, so he doesn't really block everything. He's not a particularly good framer. He doesn't really have a very good arm, as you guys just saw. So that's kind of, ah, double play just got botched. Damn, see, that, that's the problem. And Marco Vargas at second. Nice little play in the hop. Jesus Bias looks like a dog at third. Damn. Gonna talk about Jesus Bias next inning. He's fun as hell. He's hit about 110 miles an hour, and he's like 18 years old. He's 19 years old. He's a freak. But let's see. Let's see Dom Hamill get tight here and uh, keep, keep this run off the board. 
Is this your boy, Mark? Lonnie? Oh, oh TJ White. TJ, my boy. I hope he hits a home run. Hey, come on. It's Dom Hamill. Look how fucking huge he is. He's big. 20. Damn, that, that slider and Dom Hamill is just fucking ferocious. Christopher, if you had to call up any position player on the Mets this year, who would it be in our farm system? I think it's definitely Drew Gilbert. Gilbert. It's just he's the most ready. Like, he's the most advanced. Like, he's played the best in the minor leagues at the highest levels. And I think he offers something that the major league team kind of needs, which is just someone who is who could ge like be a ge run generator, like a little engine towards the bottom of the order. Take some walks, spray line drives. The power is the thing with Drew Gilbert where I just don't know if that's going to come. I, like, I don't know if it's, I don't think he's ever going to be a 30 homer guy. It's going to be whether he gets above like 20 homers or even the 25 homers is possible if he really progresses. But that's kind of the line with him. But I think that he has a lot to offer the Mets right now, especially with how good he played double A last year. When you were that good at double A, oh, Turbo, a Diamondbacks fan here, becoming a Mets fan through the podcast. Shout out to you, Turbo. Appreciate that. Yeah, I love that. But yeah, I can't, I can't believe the one brings. Also, the Mets coaches, they're going to have to coach two games today. Yeah. That's kind of funny, like Hafner and Mendoza doing two. Sit and watch two games. Yeah. <laughs> I've been Hafner works a lot with these guys, though. I met Jaegers more, but a lot from Hefner. I'm surprised the stadium's so empty. I would... Jay White's gained some weight, too. Yeah, he's a big boy. I didn't realize he was this big. I thought he was like utility infielder. Oh. No. Who am I thinking big of? Big boy. He runs well, though. Really? Yeah. Is he corner outfield? Corner outfield. Okay. Maybe first base at the worst. Like... Yeah. But he's a switch hitter, too. Switch hitter's big. I think he might be a switch thrower. We have a couple fun switch hitters, lefty bats coming up in the, in the backups in this game. Ronald Hernandez, even the, oh, the third string catcher, Vincent Perozo, who's like a big dude, lefty catcher. I think Jesus Baez might be a lefty swing too. Uh, Ryland Thomas is a lefty. He's going to come in. He's known for his defense, but he's coming in later. He's pretty fun. Jet. I love Jet. Jet looks like Jet has such a ball player vibe. Jet loves watching our Instagram stories. He does. He always. I mean, Jet's a friend of the pod. We spent like a whole day with Jet one time by accident. When he signed with the Mets, they kind of just were like, oh, go hang out with Jet for, for a while. We were like, okay, us, sure. And we hung out with uh, us and Tara, shout out Tara with the Mets and Jet. And um, it wound up being, oh, that was you smoked. That's my boy. That's your guy. That was a good piece. All right. Oh, good arm, Drew. Come on. Oh. oh good throw. Drew corked that thing. Yeesh. That's why Drew, I think, could be a center fielder. I think Jet's just faster than him, but that arm could play in center easily. It's great in right, of course. You want your big arm in right, but. Yeah, Dylan Cruz is rocking a mustache. You guys kidding me? That's nuts. Uh, Bella Womp Womp. Yeah, that, is, that was a Womp Womp, but it means all right. You got an exit below on that? Go on StatCast. We should probably, could get, can I get a StatCast tab going on here? Do it on, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, baseball savant. Just type in, on the way yeah. keyboard, type in baseball. Oh, there you go. Nice. Howard Stewart is warming up, and so is Paul Gervais. <laughs> Nats got fleece for Soto, and the Nats did not get fleece for Soto. The Nats trade of, of Soto might have been like one of the best things that we've we like that that organization's ever done because Abrams, James Wood, and McKenzie. Go oh, this game! What? Why does this game have Statcast? They don't have Statcast. I told you. What do you mean? It they just happened last night too. Petrello said they were gonna have Statcast on this game. What? Is that just none of these games? Oh, Albert Suarez, 10, 10 string swings and misses for the Orioles. Sneaky. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I was so excited for this game that StatCast. I know. You know, I heard them on a podcast. Eno was talking about this with Nick Pollock, that all these places have the data because they all have the Hawkeye. Yeah. But it's just about the teams distributing the data. So maybe they don't, the Mets didn't want to distribute. Oh, I'm so upset we don't have StatCast in this game. I on tweets. It's just not going to be. Yeah. Oh, that's so frustrating. Like to know how hard DJ White hit that ball. I would like to know. I want to know like the data on these Dom Hamill fastballs and curveballs and stuff. And we, we're getting Brandon Sprout next, too. Oh, God damn it. I'm so mad. Like, hey. really it. Yeah, this, MLB can just literally do nothing perfectly right. They never can get it all right. What's up, Wardy? Wardy, what's up, guy? That was Flora the Wardy. Handsome devil. All right, it's Gamecock time. Gamecock time? Gamecock time. Right. Gamecock. Gamecock is Mark, are you going to listen to Carl Ravage? Mark's going to be in now watching the Gamecocks because basketball, ooh, basketball in March. This is baseball month, baby. But... Let's go. Let's stop, stop the bleeding here, Dom. Get out of the inning. Don't. There you go. A little dribbler. Make a play, Luis. On hell. Nice. All right. Good inning. You know what? Two innings, one run, four or five ERA. That's fine. Ooh, you got, some, you got a War Eagle in the chat. Got a War Eagle? Yeah. What the fuck? I don't know. I can tell Mark, but I think that the Gamecocks are going to get busted up by, uh, by Auburn today. I love Auburn. I mean, they lost by 40 the first time. <laughs> Auburn's, my, Auburn's, my, uh, Auburn's my trendy pick in, uh, my trendy pick in March Madness. Peace, Mark. You guys should do this during national broadcast games, too. I think that we're going to try to do this more in games that are not Gary, Keith, and Ron. 
I mean, this this is not a Steve Gelb's podcast, so if he's doing play by play, you guys can almost as long as we're not busy. It's not like a Saturday night or something. We're not out or doing stuff for away. We're definitely going to try and do this. But uh, no, Mike, Mark. Oh, yeah. the well, yeah, I'll try to come with you next year. I mean, I just I don't know. I need I need to get a job before I can start just going to spring training for a few days for fun. So that that's going to be up to me. That's a me thing. But thoughts on the cease trade? I thought I mean, there's like crazy takes going on right now about the cease trade. I think that the White Sox did totally fine. But that's a trade the Padres should just make every single time. Like yeah. The Padres are a playoff team easily right now. I think they're a playoff team without Cease. And with Cease, they're once again a team that can super win a playoff series. And I think that's like not a fear for them at all. And like I'm, I'm just not a Drew Thorpe guy. A lot of people are. I think that there's a lot of merit to him as a prospect. I think he was like the full season minor league pitcher of the year last year. Yeah. But he just, he, I, I'll never trust a Riley without an elite fastball and with a changeup. I'm like, I really don't care at all. But, like, Iriarte, the other prospect they got, he has, like, the big fastball slider that could be, like, a very elite pitcher. But Drew Thorpe is just, like, there's a, there's a reason he's been traded twice now in one offseason. If he was this, like, lights-out pitcher that no one could avoid, like, maybe he wouldn't have been traded twice in the same offseason. But I don't know. It's kind of a thing for me where I'm like, I, I just, ah, I can't, I can't see it. I want to see it, but I really just can't see it. And then they got Sammy Savalo, who I think is actually great. He's a, he's a high-variance, like, prospect down, down low who could be, like, amazing hitter, crazy athlete, big power, stolen bases. Nah, a corner outfielder. You're thinking of Zebby, the White Sox guy. But, no, he's a good ball player. And he's got big power. He's the kind of guy who could be good. And the White Sox might do some stuff. But I love Auburn, James Shannon. Go Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes, Ian. Big game of 630. Season on the line. Shout out Jake Diebler. Save the season. All right. Let's see. Let's see the hitters. Alex Ramirez. Guys, Alex Ramirez is, uh, he gets a lot of flack online because he was supposed to be, like, the Mets, like, super prospect. But then he kind of fell off a little bit. But him falling off isn't like he's not good anymore. He's still going to be a 21-year-old at double A, which is, like, shocking. Yolanda Suarez over Drew Thorpe. Jibby, Jibby, you know ball. You know ball, Jibby. But Alex Ramirez is just, he got stuck at Brooklyn last year, and you can't hit at Brooklyn. It's so hard there. Like, if you guys have ever been to a game of Cyclones, which I recommend everyone goes to my Maimonides Park. It's amazing out there, watching baseball on the beach. Usually, I yeah, good beer deals on Thursday, and Nathan's right over there. It's a good vibe for the day. But you just can't hit there. It's right on the beach, and you get so much wind coming at you the whole game. It's miserable. And a guy like Alex Ramirez, the thing that changed his prospect standing last year, because I'm still not really worried about the bat, because like, he's going to do that. He's a swing and misser. He likes to swing a lot. His hit, Mark's, Mark, Mark's clapping for a three seven seconds into the game. <laughs> but <laughs> this is Marge. But Ramirez, just he put on so much weight, and he's never, like, he, he was more of an instinctual outfielder and, like, a physical tools outfielder. But he's just going to keep getting bigger. He's not even 22 yet. That He's just kind of destined for a corner. So him being destined for a corner, that's fine. Put on a bunch of mass, become a corner outfielder, and hit the shit out of the ball. Like, that's still his path to the major league. And he still is on track to get to the major league in 2025, which is crazy for a guy who was signed internationally and still as young as he is. But it's a lot of good stuff for Alex Ramirez. I think this is a year where he could shoot back way up prospect ranks. But it was just like he had a chance to be like a super mega prospect where he was playing center field, hitting for power, and on a fast track to reach the major leagues 22 years old. We're like, okay, if you're doing all that, like you suddenly look like Julio Rodriguez. You suddenly look like Ronald Acuna Jr. Like you look like these guys who are freaks. But now Alex Ramirez kind of goes down a notch, becomes someone who kind of profiles more as like, ah, got on top of that ball. It would be nice to hit that the other way. Got a got foul. Nice. All right. Got another shot here. Whoa, Michi. Michi Johnson, Buckeye legend. Did you really? Yeah. It's kind of fun. No, Mike Mark is chiming in from the corner over here. I thought we could have put these screens next to each other, but Mark wanted to focus on this game and then be able to watch basketball. But it was more so the wires with the dog. Oh, that's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, we got the dog here, dog in the chat. But I really just, I really want to see Alex Ramirez get out of Brooklyn, and we're going to see it this year. They already say he's going to start the year at Double A. It's going to be, it could be a big season for him. It could be a big season for him to change his uh, prospect pedigree. I like this here. Working to count. 3-2. Let's see something. Don't swing at a bad pitch here. Do not swing at a bad pitch. Oh, man. It's slow. Okay. All right. Thanks, Brandon, for spoil. Was it a bad pitch, though? Let me see if it was a bad pitch first. This is Tommy Henry, too. Tommy Henry is also like a fringe major league pitcher. Like, Alex Ramirez is 21 years old. Has not played a game in the high minors yet. Oh, man. All right. It's fastball. Got a corner. I would like to see him swing at that. Gregory, dude, Gregory Polanco is the comp. That's not a bad one. Gregory Polanco had some exciting years in the upper minors before he just flamed out because the Pirates are inept. But I don't know. If we get, if we get like, the best version of Gregory Polanco, that's a, that's a fun he thing. All-star? He was an all-star? I think one time. That's crazy he was an all-star. He had that one first half, though, you're right, where he hit the crap out of the ball. Colin Houck's interesting here. 19-year-olds playing in this game to DH. I don't like that the first round picks DHing in this game. I'd like to see some defensive value. But we heard from Matt Eddy on our podcast a few months ago that Houck probably doesn't profile the shortstop at the next level. 
to me right now, he smells a lot like Brooks Lee for the prospect heads, Cal Poly, Minnesota Twins, where it's just he can play shortstop, but eventually you're going to put on enough weight to become the hitter you want to be. So if you become put on the weight to put on the hitter you want to be and you get strong and get a little bit clunkier, you're just more destined for third base or maybe even second because we don't, we don't care about second base defense very much. Ooh. That was it was right there for the pickings. This is a flat fastball from Tommy Henry. I'm a minute behind real life. Yeah, I guess Hulu Live Sports. Maybe I could refresh and get it together in the next commercial, but yeah, sorry about that. That's, that's kind of the shame with the stream. So happy you guys hanging out here while I am a minute behind on live, but we got notes on prospects. We're talking. We're hanging. It won't, it won't update any faster. It won't, you don't think? Yeah. All right. Well, that's the stream. That's the game. Let's see Colin Hauck, though. Good eyebrows on Colin Hauck, I got to say. It's a, he, great brows. Great brows. Yeah. Yikes. Oh, man. I sat right there in the corner. All right, that's a 19-year-old kid versus Major League Pitcher. What are you going to do? Let's see it. I think this is my boy Jesus Baez coming up next, though. Yeah, Colin Houck, too, Braves fan, which is a shame. But you know why? He's a Met now, so we don't care. But I definitely think he's going to lean into that third base, second base in the future. That's kind of just where he seems like he's going to be. He's just he's big, and I want him to put on the weight and become a hitter because they love how his bat speed, they love his exit velocities from high school, from the, cir uh, the circuit. Jesus Baez is fun. We, we dropped Jesus Baez on the podcast last week because he's just, there's a lot of things he does well. <laughs> what? 2027 ETA is just like so funny. It's, yeah, it's funny. I mean, yeah, it's a, he's, got, he's got to get to like Brooklyn first, but he's just like, he's like got like that fire hydrant build that you love to see, and he just hits the piss out of the ball. Crazy bat speed. He's hit the ball. Oh, he's wearing Concord cleats. Those are disgustingly cool. Ooh. Damn, those are icy. I'm in on Jesus Baez. I'm all in. All vibes to you. Yikes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo. That's a 19-year-old. That's a major league slider, hey, uh, Jesus. Yikes. <laughs> he also definitely wants to uncork one, too, because he has the exit velocity. Like, he's hit them 108, 109, 110 in the lower minors. Like, that's major. Like, you don't see that ever for 19, 18-year-olds. Noticing there might be a pitch recognition thing. Here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Might be dead red. Yeah. <laughs> he, wants to put, he wants to put one out. There's yeah. no way they throw him a fastball. No, I also would not. Yeah. ABS is going to be weird to get used to that challenge from the ump. It's, I think, like, the weirdness around is the reason that they're not pushing it for MLB yet because even the, the pitchers have talked about it. Oh, that was dead red. That was, good spot. That was really good. I mean, you know what? That's basically a major league pitcher against three dudes in their teens. So that, that was kind of bound to happen there. But, yeah, big eyebrow guy. I mean, I got, I'm, I'm literally a big eyebrow guy, so I, re I respect eyebrows when I see them, Bella. But, yeah, that was a couple teenagers against a major league pitcher. It's not really fair that the Nationals put a 25-year-old against our teenagers. I don't like that at all. God. Ugh. What's up, people? Hanging out. Get some, let's get some comments in the chat here. Ask, ask us some prospect questions. Mets, Mets. Even ask us just Mets questions. We're hanging out here. We're doing a live podcast. What's up, Jim? Can see why his last name is oh, Baez. Yeah. That's kind of funny, yeah. Hey, Javi Baez, that, that poor bastard. I don't know what's going to happen to him this year. He might get cut, like, truthfully. Like, that team's ready to make a move. And he's still, like, playing defense, but... Yeah, I do love this guy, Nick. That, that was a major league pitcher. Like, don't blame me for a major league pitcher against a guy who's not. He hasn't been above St. Lucie. Maybe did a couple games in uh, Brooklyn last year, but I think he was like an, in the complex less than a year ago. Which is like that. The, he's playing guys who are never going to reach the major leagues versus a guy who was just in the major leagues. I like how when you stream these games too, they just spam the same commercial over and over again. It's painful. Oh my god. But shout out to you guys watching the stream. Got a, couple, got a couple people hanging out in here. Want, let's get some chats. So ask some questions. We're getting some stuff here, especially when the Mets are on the mound. I think we got Tyler Stewart next inning, either him or Sprout, courtesy of Joe DeMeo, who Joe DeMeo becoming a real friend of the pod. He's, he's my guy. I've been talking a lot of pitching, a lot of prospects. Get Joe on. Yeah, we'll probably get Joe on in the future at some point. But who's coming in? If this is Stewart, I think he's. I think it's going to be Stewart. Yeah. Or Gervais. Those were the guys that were warming up. It, I think it was Gervais, it would have been like mop up duty if Hamill couldn't get out of the inning. Yeah. yeah. But Stewart's crazy. If you guys have never seen Tyler Stewart pitch, he's six foot nine, and he has like some of the he so far even in spring training this year he has the second most extension for any pitcher that's pitched, only behind Jordan Romano. He's just a hulking menace on the mound, and he has this like downward plane on his fastball. It's really hard to square up, and guys hit lots and lots of lots of ground balls against him. That's kind of his thing. Who we got in the booth now? Is any any green legend? Hell yeah, senior VP player development. I'm gonna bump. You like that pull? Yeah, it was, how'd you know his face? He was the manager of the Padres. He was the manager of the Padres. I'm going to push some volume on Green, because I kind of want to hear what Andy Green has to say. I'm sure it doesn't look huge, I'll say that. 6'9", though. I know. These camera angles are weird. That's a downward 97? fastball, yeah. Nice. He was 97, 98 at the end of the year, and in the bullpens this year. Mets, the guys, whatever the Mets pitching development is doing right now, like, they are getting so much out of these pitchers. Velocity, movement, everything. Teaching them new pitches. They're doing things that are very hard, and they're making it look very easy. That's... Nice. Great on that fastball, getting that chopper. Nice. That's what he does. 
he was he was a sub twenty percent K rate guy last year, and he got amazing uh, results because he was an over fifty percent ground ball rate last year in the minor leagues. Southern Miss guy, you told me Southern Miss is a sneaky pitching factory yeah. too, right? Who was another pitcher that came Kirsten from there? Waldrop. Oh, before he transferred. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. There's another. There's one more too. They've they've been a big transfer. Yeah. Six nine two sixty is despicably huge. Let's see him against you. This is this is like the, one of the tallest matchups we're ever going to see in our lives right now. <laughs> this is six nine versus six five. Oh, six seven? Yeah. What the hell? This is this is like this this guy should be on the court right now. This is a. Uh, James Wood's super exciting. I, I really love James Wood as a prospect. In terms of ceiling, like there's not many minor leaguers with a higher ceiling than James Wood, which is a good foil for Cruz because Dylan Cruz is like a really solid ball player, but I don't think he's ever going to be like a super superstar. But he's not. He just will not fail. Like there's no way whatsoever. Well, that's a that's a rough slider there. Let's see. I got I got I got Tyler Stewart pitch mix stuff over here. He uh, his fastball is his pitch, and he has a, he's a sweeper that is supposed to be like his out pitch, and then a changeup that apparently is like what they're really working on now. Like, that's kind of the thing stopping him from getting to the next levels. But let's see. You got some questions in the chat. We got to get – That fastball is awesome. Nice that's like – we talked about this in the podcast. If you could go with Blade, who's going to pitch later in this <laughs> game. But that's a heavy fastball where it's just like he's so big and he comes in that downward slope where I don't think Stuff Plus will ever love it, but it's so hard to square it up. Major John Roush vibes. That's true, Christopher. But – uh Surpass. We gotta get new hitting coaches, devs, because our offense sucks. I mean, I think the Mets' offense this year it's just oh another ground ball. That's Tyler Stewart, baby. What? Who is that? Big triple? Yeah, I mean he's not making his free throws. No, but uh, I I think that the the Mets hitting this year is gonna come down to how good McNeil is, how good Marte is, how good Bailey and Vientos can be, and just if DJ Stewart gets if lightning in the bottle was kind of real, but. I don't know. The Mets hitting this year might, yeah, might struggle, especially this spring. It's like, ooh, it's kind of being a little scary how bad the Mets hitting is. Like the pitching's been amazing, we love that, but the hitting has been terrifying. No one's squaring up Tyler Stewart. This is kind of the book on him. It's really cool. There's football notifications. I don't need that. Don't care about that right now. Uh, is your concern level higher now? That Sang got pushed back a week, even though it's precautionary. I think that this was kind of what. We've talked about with Sanga on the pod for a while, where it's just like, do you, we don't want him to push anything because if he gets three ground balls for Tyler Stewart, baby, love that, love that, that downhill action. That was such an easy inning at the top of this order. That's awesome. That was three marquee prospects, Dylan Cruz, uh, James Wood, and Brady House. Tyler Stewart just made quick order of them. That's amazing. But I was talking about, oh, yeah, I think, like, this was always the thing with Sanga. Like, I, we were never going to be the most favorable. I said June 15th from the start, and if he comes back June 15th, I think it's a win. Even 4th of July, I think, is a win, but he can't blow that arm out. If he blows that arm out and gets full rotator cuff surgery or capsule surgery, like, it could, truthfully, fuck him forever. Like, this, 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 that was the first surgery that Sixto Sanchez got. I don't want to, like, give people a horror story, but that's the kind of thing that if it goes bad, it goes bad. I just, we can't have that happen. Like, he's too valuable to this team. So just relax take the whole first two months off and just wait on it. But I, I tweeted, I think people took it the wrong way. Like, it was terrible that he got pushed back. I, was, I wasn't mean it was terrible that he got pushed back. It was just terrible that this was an injury that he was dealing with. Like, that was the fear. And I, that's why I'm very scared about Kodai Sanga in general. But uh, Jim Jam, prediction for what month Gilbert sees the majors. I feel like unless there's a big injury, it's probably going to be August because there are so many rules that benefit now these prospects. If they can get a full year and – if you can get a guy in the rookie of the year race, like you get extra draft picks. So I think it's going to be similar to Mauricio last year. It sucks they fucking tore his ACL. But if the Mets don't need Gilbert, if there's not a major injury to either Nimmo, Marte, or Bather, or I get, I mean, Tyrone Taylor is even a good, a good backup with that. But unless there's a major injury where the Mets need a spark, you're probably not seeing Gilbert till the end of the year because they want to retain that rookie of the year status for 2025. Uh, thank God MLB came to their senses and made this game free to watch for everyone. This is a really good idea for MLB. Like, I made the joke a million times on the podcast, but this is their best marketing ploy since steroids. Because, like, people are obsessed with prospects. People love prospects. Baseball cards are crazy. Dynasty baseball is crazy. Everybody loves talking about prospects. It's so much fun because, you know what? They're all good till they're not. Like, we don't care. Like, right now I'm talking about every single pitcher in the Mets. The Mets going to run out this game like the guy's a dog. But who knows? Half of them definitely will not be. Bella, Blade's an insanely good baseball name. Blade is Blade's a good name for anything. I even think Blade's a better like fighting name. Blade would be a good like shogun name if you want to be like a samurai, like a blade. Like But I love Blade. Okay, this is the first teenager pitching for the Nationals. Let's see what we got here. Travis Sakura. Anything? Really? He yeah, twenty twenty three draft, third round out of high school. Six 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 two thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of six, though, is there an actual chance he could be the closer? I tweeted that the other day, like, half kidding, but the Marlins' bullpen's in disarray right now because A.J. Puck is coming to the rotation, and he was their most consistent reliever last year. 
Oh. Tanner Scott's gross, but like he has not been able to find a strike zone. He struggled this a lot in his career. So like there's a world where Sixo Sanchez just throws the hardest. He just becomes the closer. They have another really good reliever back there too. I can't remember. Another lefty. But oh, we got Blade next inning. Let's go Blade. Blade's fun, guys, because Blade throws so many different pitches. He's coming fastball, sinker, slider, curveball, cutter. Like he's coming out. He's going to throw five, six different pitches in this outing, which is a really cool thing. Got some more notifications. Uh, who's it? Who we got up? Is this Vargas? Is this Marco Vargas? This is Marco Vargas. Marco Vargas, the jewel of the David Robertson trade, which is amazing. We got a guy who's like a borderline top 100 prospect for a half season of David Robertson who sucked with the Marlins last year. But, oh, good piece, Marco. Gap, 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 gap. Is that going? Oh, warning track. Damn it. That's pretty cool, though. I put 97 in the outer half, opposite field to the warning track. I wish we had stack cast. We could see how hard he hit it, but we do not, which is a shame. But Marco Vargas is exciting. He's going to play the whole year in, at PSL. I think he's still is an 18 year old. And I think it's a Brooklyn's 19 year old. Like that suddenly is a guy who's on the fast track. And that's amazing. He was one of the Marlins' biggest prospects when we got him. And that's a huge thing. Don't think he get Brooklyn this year? Maybe. He had to hit the shit out of the ball down there. And we just have a lot of position player prospects now. Jet. Take that. Good take, Jet. Let's have a good at bat here. Jet with the nice Nike cleats. A lot of savages in this lineup. If Jet. You can't use that term. Oh, yeah, you're right. I can. Yeah, I hate that. I'll take that back. Jet getting his weight up to 190 is insane. That's fucking huge. As some, yeah, this guy's a mess. I've, I've stood next to Jet, and I'm probably taller than him, which is probably scary to people here because you guys know how short I am. But if he weighs 190 pounds, like, that is a, that's a solid individual. Like, he's, he's, he's pushing, like, like lower, like, out of Power 5 conference college running back st- like size right now, 5'7", 190. Like, that's like Frank Gore Jr. Let's see some Jet. No, Christopher, they're not giving Stewart one more. They want to go one, one per inning for all these guys. Because this is a showcase game. You want to get people in these games. And, like, you're going to see, you're going to see Blade. You're going to see Brandon Sproat. You're going to see Nolan McLean. And the last guy who's definitely scheduled to pitch is Calvin Ziegler. That was all courtesy of, again, Joe DeMeo. Him with the DMs in the morning. Hell of a guy. But, no, no. Oh, we're, we're cha- got a challenge. And that might be a strikeout. This ABS is strange. But, yeah, fellas, Jet is such a tech. Like, he, I don't want to run through Jet. The previous pitch has been challenged. Yeah. That's a strike. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you, Jet. Bye, Jet. Two strikeouts. That's a shame. Okay, I'm going to get a water. Oh, oh. All right. Well, that's, a, that's a shame for Jet. I mean, there's also two at-bats. Like, I'm like, right, well, no one's on two at-bats here doing anything. But yeah, Bell, no Christian Scott. But I think that just means Christian Scott's ready for the majors. And, uh... Wait. Christian Scott also, because I think Hamill's probably going to pitch in the major leagues this year too. But, um, oh, Drew, get out, baseball. Oh, man. All right. That was a good piece. Quick inning for Sakura. But, um, Christian Scott just doesn't probably have that many innings on his arm this year because he's only. T- what app? MLB app? MLB TV app. Oh. No stack is MLB TV. I'm going to get my MLB app going. Nice call. Thank you, Surpassed. But, Christian Scott only got to, I think he was under 100 innings last year. So he probably has a max at all levels this year, 120. And there's a good chance the Mets want a lot of those come to the major leagues. So I think there's just, even him throwing two innings in this game at like as hard as he can, they'd probably just rather have those innings where they're going to be much more controlled and can be much more valuable to the team. Which, this is a valuable team, this is a showcase. But also, I'm telling you guys, the Mets have a lot of really fun prospects coming through, especially pitching prospects. The lab is legit. And that's why, like, you're going to see Brandon Sproat and Nolan McLean these next few innings after Blade. Like, we've seen Blade in spring training, so we know it. But, enjoy it random. But Davis Stern is actually really tall. He's definitely really tall. That's it's also a thing. Like, all the Major League Baseball front office guys are really tall. It's, it's definitely the biggest thing stopping me, sadly. But he's a, he's, a, he's a big fella. Mark laughed at that one. This is the MLB app. I want to see the exit velocity in that Gilbert one, too. But, yeah, just Christian Scott, like, they want these innings to be where they are. Drew, 103 off the bat. Let's go. That that kind of is like, that's like the fear with Drew though that he kind of lives in that like 103 to 107 exit velocity range. Like he hasn't had that. He had them in college with the metal bat. Like his like his he was like 90 percentile exit velocity there, but he hasn't done it yet with the wood in the minor leagues. We definitely want to see him get that one up. But 103 22 degree launch angle. That ball should have gone to the wall. That's kind of ridiculous. They're playing simple man right now. That's not that's not right. They shouldn't play that for Blade said well. Nick asked if you just woke up, Mark. I've been awake since nine. You've been awake since nine. Yeah. How late were you gaming last night? Oh, yeah, that's not that bad. Oh, yeah, because it's a dog. Yeah, yeah Mark's ended up being a root for Rude Awakening and hanging out with a dog this week. He's going to have to get up early because this dog is used to a real lifestyle. He's chilling. 
Where are we getting these? I said he'll wake up when you wake up. Okay. Hey, Tony, v- Tony Vitello. Oh, Blade is a fear. Where, where do you see these in the app? Is the what? Ballpark is the ballpark app? Maybe no. MILB app? Find out where this is in the app. I can't. Oh, Baseball Savant? No. People love Blade, though. Blade's like the kind of guy at Wake since 9 is a YouTuber. That's kind of funny. Simple Man does cause war flashbacks. I'm sad about Simple Man being. I mean, again, we want Blade to be a big time starting pitcher. The community, the prospect community is very divided on Blade Tidwell. What? Oh, go to game day? So, yo, Hondi just hit that 105. Damn, that was nice for you, Hondi. Wait, so in like in the game day? Yeah, game day. And then, like, the play by play, you can just click on it. Okay. Do it okay, very cool. Nice. All right. So we're still hanging out here. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for talking about Exit Velocity on game day. Because we know Clover Park has fucking stack cast. We have it for all the Mets spring training games. DJ White 107. 107. Nice. That's huge. Prada's still back there. Last night, I was like kind of half paying attention because of the Buckeyes. Did the starters play for the whole games? Uh, not necessarily. Yeah. I'm interested to see because this, this is a deep roster. The Mets have a lot of interesting prospects that are probably coming in later, but Prada's a one-knee catcher too. Everyone's a one-knee catcher these days. How do you feel about that, Mark? It. Yeah? It's like the whole league now. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I'm sure there's like some numbers behind it of like your legs will yeah. last longer kind of thing. Probably. Pressure, yeah. And you're not giving up that much, but I just think like just get in shape. <laughs> Yeah, you two were telling the athletes to get in shape. Yeah, I can catch 18 innings, right? <laughs> Spin? Ah, yeesh, that was hit hard, kind of hard, too. Yeah. Yeah. Getting uh, getting some action here on Blade. This might... Uh, yeah, no. This is what happened to him that game against the Cardinals that went, uh, went around, too, where it's just... He doesn't miss enough bats which is the, with his fastball. The other pitches he does. I guess that was a spinner, actually. A little curveball at sat or slider. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? You know who looks sick? Who? Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens looks amazing. Paul Skeens looks like the best pitcher on the Pirates. Paul Skeens looks better <laughs> than everybody. I mean, I, him and Job though both look sick. I'm, I'm having trouble like figuring out who, which one of those guys is better. Because Job, Job the other day looked at. Job at looks sick, yeah. He looks incredible. Yeah, Paul Skeens' fastball was like a whiff of life. Yeah, it was popping. And his slider was gross. Yeah. Mark looking like he's gonna sell me a mixtape. Hope Doc Sitton's going well. Mark's wearing a sweatshirt from uh, our favorite dive bar. Shout out Rock and Roll in Brooklyn, East Williamsburg. So everyone, all of our group of friends, we all spend our birthdays there. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. My birthday got strapped over this year, and I left at 2, and everybody looked at me like I had killed somebody. They were like, you're leaving at 2? But, yeah, it's a great sweatshirt. It's a great institution. Rock and roll. Best, best, best beer in Brooklyn. No. Cold. Cold every time. Here we go. Spin it. Spin it. Luis. Marco. Yeah. There you go. A lot of the ground balls from this mess pitching staff. Kind of love that. It's a been really into ground balls recently. I've been hearing some of the driveline guys talk about ground balls. They just they'll never hurt you over and over again. And you guys can see it there. Three ground balls, two of them find the hole. One of them you get two outs. Like now it's just two outs. I can get out of sending really easily again. Paul Skeens would be his Pirates ace today. He definitely would be. But I also completely understand them wanting to keep him down just because there's he he could be like the savior of the franchise in a way. Like they took him number one overall for a reason. And there's so many sequencing things that Paul Skeens get better at. Like, his slider and his changeup are not really perfect yet, and he can develop those more. Like, his fastball is his fastball, and while the shape isn't good, he throws it fucking 102 miles an hour, so the shape doesn't matter almost at all. Kind of like how Otani throws 99 and all this stuff. But another challenge from the pitch. Oh, it's a ball. All right, keep it. Keep moving on. I like that when they challenge these. It's just like, it's two seconds. Everybody just looks at the scoreboard, and you keep moving on. I hope they do do this in the Major League at some point, but we'll, we, we shall see. Yeah, however. Pinky. Who's Pinky? Pinky from the Nationals, Mark, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? 97 from Blade there. Blade has that velocity, too. And, again, like, like we're talking about with Skeens, like while the fastball shape on Blade isn't great, like the scouts do not like it, the data does not like it, if you're throwing 97, you are going to get people out. I think that's kind of relevant for Blade Tidwell. With that nice, easy 97. 98 from Blade Tidwell. Let's go. I will say, I don't, I don't really love Parada behind the plate. That's a, that was a bad frame job. I said bad frame job, but Jim Duquette says nice frame job. It's kind of hilarious. But let's see it. That was a good pitch. Uh, 3 out, whatever. All right. 3-1. Let's see. Is Blade going to come with a fastball here? Is he going to drop some off speed? I think I would drop some off speed if I was Blade. Show something else. 
But also, we're going to see big velocity in this game because these guys are all throwing one inning, and they know, like, this is their showcase. This is when they're really being recognized. Yep, that was the off-speed, but he could not locate it. Yeah, Blade does not have the feel right now. He's trying to find that, trying to find that grip. But that's okay. A guy like Blade, though, is going to be very important because with a suboptimal fastball, you definitely want him, with multiple breaking balls at his disposal and a cutter, you want him to be able to place those and be able to throw them early, late, whenever he wants and counts. Like, that's definitely a big thing. With these low, like these pitch scouting, something I'm trying to really add to my own analysis of like where, whether or not you're comfortable as a pitcher throwing your off-speed pitches whenever. TJ White, Mark. TJ White versus Blade. This is the Mark battle. Wow, he just smoked another one. Oh my God. Jeez. Could we get next velocity and a foul ball on here? Oh my God. That was like 110. This guy looks like a monster. He's. Whew. Is he, what's his path to the major leagues? What's his path? Yeah, like how, how far how far away? He was like high A last year. Hmm. He still meant it. His numbers weren't great in the minors last year. He like no. does things well, but then like we'll go on trips and there's like over 18. Yeah, he's got, those are some likes he's got on him. It's a big boy. That was the guy whose parents thanked me when I tweeted about him. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's super cute. When I like tweet, I'm like, no one's talking about this TJ White kid. I'm like, but he's fucking sick. <laughs> I'm like, and somehow he got recruited to Indiana and not... South Carolina being from South Carolina. Really? So that, and they came up and were like, thank you so much. for like, like, we were really excited for what our son can hopefully do in the majors. Uh -huh. And he got drafted. That's amazing. That's cool when you see that stuff. Come on, Blade. Let's see some. Drop one in, Blade. Oh, that was a good curveball, I will say. That was nice. That was nice. Good eye by TJ. Mark's boy. All right. Let's see that. He's got a nice rainbow on that curve. You know, you know what I'm going to say, which is he might be crazy? The comp I'm starting to smell for Blade Tidwell? It's fucking Noah Syndergaard. Okay. Huge velocity, but oh, TJ. The swing and miss lacks, but the, if the command is good, he'll become a really good pitcher. Yeah, you, you'll be lucky to score 55 in this game. You're just good. Yep. So good. Auburn is really good. Deep team. Shout out to Auburn. Go, go Tigers. That was, I mean, that's, that was. That's not even a bad pitch. No. That was, yeah. He definitely missed the spot, though. He was trying to go low and away. Which a big left-handed power hitter like TJ White, you want to go, you want to stay low and away. But, yeah. TJ met killer. Any standouts as of, yeah, by Michael Z. I mean, Drew hit the ball hard, didn't get a hit for it. Uh, Tyler Stewart looked amazing. Very impressed by him. Same with Dom Hamill getting up to 97, 98. And I've liked Acuna's defense at shortstop. No crazy plays yet, but he's been a guy who, like, scouts are starting to question whether or not he can stick there. And it doesn't matter that much because the Mets have Francisco Lindor at the major leagues for forever. So it, definitely impressive, though, seeing Luis Angel Acuna, like, being very, very sturdy over there at shortstop defense. But keep seeing it. Dusty Baker's son giving a scouting report. It's ridiculous. But most impressive guy so far in this game, I would definitely say, is Tyler Stewart. And he's someone who's going to be in double A this year and could definitely profile as a back-of-the-rotation type guy. Bartolo Colon jersey making it onto the broadcast. That's hysterical. It is. Horrible numbers. <laughs> like bad, bad? Yeah. All right, get out of it, get out of it. There you go. Yeah, Marco Vargas also did smoke a ball opposite field to the track. I'm going to find the exit velocity on that one, too. It was 98. Chat said that. Yeah, 98. Darren Baker's OPS was last year. 640. 698. All right. Not, not as bad as I thought. So. But, so we got, I think we have Acuna now coming up again this inning, and we got another Ryan Clifford that bat, which I'd love to see that. Okay, Ryan Clifford, guys, this is this is the sneaky one in the system right now. He's not really, he's still not getting national attention because the stats were so bad in Brooklyn, but nobody can hit in Brooklyn. Go to a game in Brooklyn. Go stand in right field. Tell me that wind out there. Love Tyler Stewart. Wish he had double A when I went to college at Big. Oh, damn, surpass that Bing. Did you get to a lot of games when you were at Binghamton? I feel like that's probably one of the only things to do is go to the Binghamton Mets games. But he came up when Drew got there at double A, then Jet got called up towards the end of the year, and they went on there just tear, and they almost won the whole double A championship, which was massive. But Stewart was a big part of that. And they just they seemed like they had an edge, and a big part of that edge was because of their starting pitching. Like they were just so ready for guys to like come up. They knew they had the starting pitching edge every single day. So you make Acuna play third and then Jed second. I don't think Acuna profiles at third baseman. I know I don't think the arm is good enough to be there, but he he to me is more of an outfielder, second baseman. Jet to me is the guy that seems like they're pushing in center field. And you guys can see in this game, like the fact that they put Jet in center field for this game and Acuna at shortstop. So they see Acuna to me as much more of the middle infielder and Jet more as the center fielder. 
I think Chet was playing there like one day a week last year, but he would go just because you're only playing there one day a week, like weeks at a time without even getting a chance because that's just, that's just how the cookie crumbles. That's baseball, Susan. And he's just he, – apparently the instincts are good. It's just about size. Like there's not that many small center fielders out there. It's a rare thing because you just want a longer stride to cover more ground. Showing Steve Chilcott right now, Mets number one overall pick. Uh, he, history fact, the Mets drafted Steve Chilcott number one overall over Reggie Jackson because they were perturbed about Reggie Jackson being in an interracial relationship. So that's a, that's a shout-out to the Mets brass from way back in the day. But let's see Luis Angel get, get, get around on one, lift one. Jim Duquette was involved in the Paul Wilson signing. Of course he was. This guy's been, oh, this guy's been bad, bad vibes ever since he was in like his 40s, 30s. God, Jim Duquette famously traded Scott Casimir for Victor Zambrano, one of the worst trades in Mets history. Oh, DJ Hurst. They got him from the Heimer Candelario trade. He's kind of fun. Uh, he looks like that guy who was Todd in uh, Breaking Bad, who does the same role in every movie, just like a really weird dude. He. Luis on Acuna, man, the pitch selection is not there. I really wish we would just chill on Luis on Hell and give him the whole year in the minor leagues, and not be worried. But he just is on the forty-man roster. It's hard to do that. That was a bad at bat. Jeez, the spinner right down the middle. Two strikes. I thought it was gonna be a high fastball, I guess. All right, let's see Ryan Clifford, baby. Come on, shades at the plate, dog. One zero, -oh, dog. 22, 22 grads a semester. You're, you're a dog surpassed. That's literally insane. I can't even imagine that. You were big though the same time as Alvarez and Bailey were there. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that team was dope. I and mean, Bailey and Alvarez ran right through that league. They dominated that level. But, yeah, it just that stinks with that. That Acuna bat really sucked. Damn. What channel is on? Brian's on SNY. Or MLB TV for free. Are you streaming all day for both games? No, definitely not. We're going to do this game as much as we can, but... Yeah, then Buckeyes at 6. I'm definitely not streaming through, through Buckeyes at 6. I'm watching that over the Mets spring training game. Oh, I just got, I'm gonna, nice. There you go. Good eye. Good eye, Cliff. Yeah, lefty, lefty. Good test. I'm going to lower these guys. I don't want to listen to Jim test. Uh, you hate a good test. But I definitely don't want to listen to Jim Duquette talk baseball. No offense to Jim, but it's just not good. I guess he needs... <laughs> Guess needs some volume. Just, hey, just, ooh, Matthew, swinging three zero. Matthew, thank you, thank you for the gift. Keep up the great content, fellas. I love GM. Appreciate thank that, you, bro. Matthew, appreciate hey, you. Thank you, Matthew. That's gonna be half of my beer later. I appreciate that. But uh, this lefty, oh, whoa, what? His time? His Fuck time? The batter. He wasn't. The batter never engaged with his eyes. Like they never locked eyes. Oh, uh, okay. So is that a strike on Cliff? Yeah. The pitch clock's still kind of weird. How funny would it be if they uh, like got a sticky stuff? A guy with sticky stuff in one of these games. That'd be lit. Good, good at bat from That's Ryan Clifford. Bat. Amazing. He swung one time and it was on 3 0. That's a great at bat. Guys, Ryan Clifford is a baseball guy. Like, he's been trying to do some media stuff and he's just so chill. Like, he just can't do anything besides think, eat, sleep, talk, breathe baseball. It's kind of amazing. He doesn't want to. Hell no, he doesn't want to. He's a dog. Carry North Carolina product. Vanderbilt recruit. If he would have gone to Vanderbilt and, like, hit the shit out of the ball there, like, he easily would have been a second, third round pick in, like, would it probably would have been the next year's draft. I mean, Hey, move up, move up, move up, move up. Duck on the punk, Parada. Let's see it, baby. That's a lefty. Yeah. Yeah, Parada. Parada's still yet to beat the Kevin Ploiecki allegations. I really want to see him do it, but I don't know. <laughs> also a first-round pick. <laughs> they also have, like, such a similar build, just like a lunky catcher. They also wear, like, glasses. Let's go. Good, pe Peace. good piece of hitting. That's a run. Tie the game, baby. <laughs> James Wood has such a vibe in the outfield. The hat's flying off of the do-rag. God, he's going to be so good. I have a feeling a 2023 season will be looked upon. I feel like that too, Sir Pass. It's just, if you guys have listened to the podcast, we've been talking about that. Like, this is such a season for the baseball rat. Like, this is, we're ready to fucking just watch ball, cheap games at City Field because we cannot go there for free anymore. Just hang out, eat some food, drink some booze, like, just relax and watch some baseball. And this team's going to, you guys have seen the pitching so far in spring training where it's just, it's so weird. It's going to be so strange. Like, Adrian Hauser in a rocking chair out there, Sean Manaya throwing weird ass sweepers. Like, they're just going to hang. Like they're gonna miss a lot of the, they're not gonna miss a lot of bats, but they're gonna be a lot of ground balls, lazy fly balls. We're gonna have good defense for the first time like in our lives as Mets fans, which is pretty cool. Let's see how Samira's got a piece of one here. You guys can see this big time power from the right side. 
He he's the kind of guy who I feel like he's gonna put on like thirty pounds in the next two years. Oh my god, that was a hack. Jeez, he wanted that one. But that was that was an Alex Ramirez thing where he's definitely trying to pull a pitch on the other half. Where if he goes with that, that that could have been easy power the other way. But he's trying, he just he's so big. His back is crazy. His limbs are so long. He's an umpire. So <laughs> there it is. Nice piece the other way. Umpire's huge. He just inside out that ball like ninety five miles an hour the opposite direction. Just so much power. Such a lever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jeff McNeil, if he gives me your number. I did fix Jeff needs to text me again. That's what it is. Maybe it's a good for time to reach out. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know it's wrong. Especially while I was rehabbing. I'd love to have him on the pod. But, yo, know, so if you guys have any ideas for guests, we definitely want to have some guests on next, like, two weeks before the season starts. Like, get really get excited here, get it going. So, if you guys have ideas that are, like, attainable, please let us know. Because usually when we ask this, you go, oh! Oh, God. Hard, though. Let's see how hard he hit that. It might have, like, looked harder than it was. I'm guessing 89. Game day app is slow right now. Game day, let's see it. Oh, man, the Cox are not scoring, huh? In play, that was... Let's see, give me the exit velocity, fellas. $10 dugout seats in a week night when it's rainy during a non-competitive season. Literally, I think we are going to be competitive. Like, I really do. 94 on that, so just below hard hit. But I think the Mets are going to compete. Like, this team is not going to fall away. Like, we, we did the tweet the other day where it was like, tell, let us know how many games you guys think the Mets are going to win this year as, as we engagement farm oh, to fun. try and get some eyes on this show. But it's just, I, I, I'd be so shocked if the wheels actually fell off this team. Like, I've heard people talk about the seat, the floor in this team is lower than it's ever been. I don't think it's true. And you guys are seeing it with the way this pitching depth looks so far in the spring. I was, ta- I was talking about it on Twitter yesterday with Joe DeMeo, like, just watching Jose Budo develop over and over again where it's like, Mets have like nine or ten guys. So like I really don't feel bad if they're starting a regular season Major League Baseball game. And we've not been able to say that about the Mets team in our entire lives because we've had such a horrible streak of general managers who did not care about player development or minor, or minor league depth at all. And now we have that finally, thank God. But there's so many good things out there. Like we have so many pitchers. Like the hitting, the hitting could get bad at times. If there's an injury to any of the big three, like I'll be pretty horrified by the Mets lineup. But I don't know. Then it, then it becomes down. Oh, Colin Houck with a nice piece. Let's go. Mets what? prospects. First round pick, Colin Houck. Let's see what we got on that EV. Worthy. Ryan Clifford's the truth. Worthy. I love how much you love Ryan Clifford. I appreciate that. We need to get all the Mets content creative that's just hyping up Ryan Clifford because he's a dog. And, you know, if the worst happens with Pete Alonso, Ryan Clifford's going to be a little lot riding on Ryan Clifford. Let's see the exit velocity. 85 on Houck. Look up. He's a hitting. I also think this Mets team could 84 wins driving. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this team got to 85 or 86. It, this is when Jesus Bias tries to uncork one, baby. Let's go. All right, good take. Good take, Jesus. Spit on it. Yeah, don't let that. I was also like, all these guys, who these Mets big-time prospects are wearing numbers in the 70s. Jesus Bias is like 23, baby. Michael Jordan. That's me. 19 years old. 5'9", 200. <sighs> Looks athletic in the box. Oh, Ooh. Uh, seed. hit it too hard. That was pissed off. Uh, he hit it too hard, Jesus Baez. What are you going to do? Three Hana. All right, nice little tie. Good little rally there. Got a couple base hits. Let's see what the exit velocity was. Jesus Christ. Sorry, there was trouble loading the content in the exit velocity. I want to see it. Come on. In play. 112 from Asus Baez. Holy shit, that's a new max that's exit velocity. Ever hit a ball. Holy crap, that's incredible. For messed up or for a personal? What do you think is going to do better? Probably personal, honestly. Personal. Oh my god, that's amazing. Wow, 111, 112 is a 19 year old. God damn, that's gross. Why do I have so many Twitter notifications right now? I was, I'm in a, I was talking about some guy about Dynasty stuff. Oh my God! Hey, Susan, tweeting live. Is this the content you guys want to see? This guy's 19 years old. He hit the ball 112. That's fucking sick. That's incredible. Wow, we just we lost a ton of viewers right now because I was just not talking for three minutes. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, it's also commercial. But, that damn. Probably, that's probably... I'm not even kidding. In terms of, like, max... You know, that probably put him in the top, like, 
Oh, that's top one percent of minor leaguers. I'm not even kidding. I'm saying in the majors, you're probably top ten percent. No, probably top like sixty, top top forty percent. Because when they said his, I, I was reading on Fangraphs this week when they said his max EV in the minor leagues was um. Uh, when they oh shit, I just I just X out the picture. When they said his max EV in the minor leagues was one hundred nine, they said it was fiftieth percentile for the major leagues. It was, what was the, what was the actual thing? One eleven point nine. Damn. JD Martinez, Jared Kalnick. That's nasty. Nolan McLean, let's go. Nolan Mack? Who's this guy? Oh, is this Vaquero? Is it is Kristen? Yeah. J-Rod time. Vaquero? Let's go, Nolan McLean. This is awesome. Bang. Nice slider. That thing's disgusting. Jeremy Rodriguez at short. Really? Oh, Jeremy Rodriguez. I got some notes on Jeremy Rodriguez, Christian but... Baquero. Christian. Christian. I know nothing about him. But, uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? What was I going to say about Baez stuff? I don't remember. Uh, oh, that's disgusting! That is a 19-year-old, but good pitch. Yeah. Guys, Nolan McLean also, last year, he was actually hitting more once he got, after he got drafted by the Mets than pitching. He had 25 plate appearances between the Complex and then actually in St. Lucie for a few of them. And then he threw three innings at, at St. Lucie. And he was like, I mean, he throws 100. Only pitched three innings last year. But like this game, this is, this is the coming out party for Nolan McLean. You guys are watching it live. That slider is disgusting. Everybody uh, drop a like on the stream. Woo! Appreciate you. Yeah, totally. Subscribe as well. Yeah, definitely trying to do this. Get some subscribers to the channel. So let's get that stuff going. But and, uh, No, we don't have jobs outside of YouTube. I need one for sure. Mark doesn't, but. Because I just do YouTube. Yeah. I'm trying to get something. I might get some. I'm trying to get some freelancing stuff during the season. We're 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 talking to some people. We're seeing what's gonna happen. But any of the guys from Till Mets do his part pockets, we could guess. Yeah, I guess maybe I don't even know who they are, but we'll look into them. Uh, Mets offenses look better for the major league. Ooh, 89. Can we see 100 mile an hour fastball, Nolan? Look at that athlete PFPs. though, covering first. Let's go. PFP is Nolan McLean. Oh yeah, we changed all the lineup here. Ronald Hernandez catching Perozo at first. Jeremy Rodriguez at short. Nice. Next time around the other, we got some stuff. Uh, hi, Mark and James. Hey, Daniel. What's going on? What? Who's this guy? I don't know. Is that Jeremy Hefner? No. Are you sure? Uh, Reed Brignac. Joe, do YouTube, James. I'd watch. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing YouTube. I've made some, and I've like watched them back, and they felt like horrible, so I just never put them out. Oh. oh who was that? I think I was Jesus Bias still. No, it was Bias. It's a melanin. Yeah, I've have, I have considered you doing YouTube. I just like the things I like are so not transferable to the normal people that I just feel like it wouldn't get views. Like, I made a video, but I never published it, about, like, relievers that, like, people have never heard of. But I was like, does anybody want... I mean, now it kind of makes sense. It's kind of funny, but, like, does people want to hear me talk about Abner Rebe for, like, five minutes? But who knows, maybe. The Kings? Yeah, the GOAT, the greatest, best reliever in baseball. Yeah, Mark's here now and again. I'm not good at the promo stuff. Mark's a pro YouTuber. He knows to jump in, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. And Mark's also trying to block out the fact that South Carolina doesn't even have 20 points 15 minutes into a oh, basketball game right now. Play, it's first to 60. <laughs> well, they have 30. Yeah, lots of time. But come on, Nolan. Let's see one. Throw 100. Throw 100, Nolan. Good matchup for Gio, yeah. Dude, this slider is disgusting. Very sharp. Very sharp. Oh, my God. This slide is amazing. <laughs> oh, Reed Brignac's the manager today. Fucking Mendoza's not doing Oh, that's yeah. amazing, yeah. Shout out Reed Brignac. I can't. Nice. Be, I cannot believe it. Nice. Great inning from Nolan McLean. Mets pitching's looked amazing this game. I gotta say. But James and Mark, would you eat for lunch? Mark, would you have for lunch? Chicken cutlet and uh, rice. I do. Uh, I had I had some scrambled eggs before I left my house and came up here at about noon. So that was my lunch technically. Uribe getting closer. What's I can't I can't see. It. Getting the closer job, James. I I think the Brewers are gonna do some real foo foo shit with the closer job. And this is just for me being like friendly with David Bednar and knowing the bullshit that um that goes on with relievers and arbitration. But the biggest thing for relievers and arbitration is saves. And right now, Abney Uribe, Trevor McGill, who child Tyler's brother is a fucking disgusting reliever for the Brewers. You guys never seen a pitch. But those two and Joel Joel Piomps are all relievers who are arbitration eligible or pre-arb for the Brewers, and they're going to split the saves between all of them because they don't want to fucking pay any of them. So all those guys are going to get five saves. So if you guys play fantasy baseball, I would avoid them all. Unless you're in a saves plus hold league, then I would target all of them. But just saves, I'd avoid all of them. But shout out to Reed Brignac. I've heard a lot of good things from industry people about Reed Brignac as like a player development person. But what do you got going here? 
That's like a child coaching Auburn. Is that the, that's not, oh, that's like Bruce Pearl's lackey. Is that his son? It's definitely his son. That's got to be his kid, right? Yeah. Same chin. Oh. But, boy, he's giving me some YouTube stuff. Wow. I think you could really target that niche audience looks for lots of advanced. Yeah, yeah, but like advanced pitching stuff, like it's never going to do it. If I'm never going to do it, I would have to like supplement advanced pitching with like, like me talking about like crazy baseball history shit. Like that, the fact that Babe Ruth was like adopted by the owner of the Orioles. Now it's his first job at playing baseball. But yeah. I'll give this a shot. I mean, again, I'm, gonna, I'm still trying to make content this year. Definitely going to do some stuff with Pitcher List. Talk to some other people where I might write for it. should be really cool, but we'll see if that happens and do some like more podcasting and videos. But James, bet five on Adrian Hauser, Cy Young. No. The, bet, the best bet to make right now, uh, it's Logan Gilbert and Pablo Lopez. Make a lead, lead in the league in wins and Cy Young for both of those guys. Logan Gilbert... I think Mark made the bet too. Seventy-five to one to lead the league in wins. He's like one of the ten best pitchers in baseball, in like in the American League. Like he and that team is awesome. The bullpen's really good. The hitting sucks. That might kill him for wins, but Stadium's also great to pitch in. But that that was like the craziest bet I've ever seen in my life. But let's see it. Marco Vargas getting another at bat. I like that. Harlan Susana pitching. This was the other piece of the Juan Soto trade that the Padres are going to regret. Look at Harlan Susana. This guy's a hoss. Thank you, Worthy. You're the man. But yeah, we'll see it. This is a good. This is a good test for Marco Vargas. Seeing some real velocity, seeing a real slider. I like this. That's gas. Jeez, 101. That's gas. Holy shit, Harlan Susana. Oh my god, this is insane. I like this guy a lot. He's a really good again. Deep dynasty league people, Harlan Susana. If you guys are, if you guys have like ten prospects in your roster, he should be one of them because he's a freak. Oh, let's see something. Come on, Marco. Inside that hundred. Late in a hundred. Marco Vargas has easy all-fields power. I really got to say. He's a little stockier than I thought he was, too. I thought he'd be a skinny boy. How do I think David Bednar will pitch this year, Matthew? If David Bednar is on the mound, he's going to be a monster. I love David Bednar as a person, as a pitcher. He's the man. He's just he's such a freak. He's such a stud. He just has some back issues right now, which that that's kind of a scary thing. But we'll see about that. Let's see. Let's see his pitch for Marco Vargas here. I'm going to respond to people on Twitter. Easy opposite field power. 102. Jesus. D, 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 defense. Oh, man. 102 is disgusting. Oh, my God. 103! Get what? the fuck out of here. Jesus. Good for Marco Vargas for getting this count full against easy 100. He hasn't seen a pitch below 100 miles an hour. Here comes the or whatever it's gonna be. No, he's going to do fastball again on him. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Impressive walk for Marco Vargas right there against 102. That's good stuff right there. He, Matt, uh, Matt Eddie said on the podcast about Jeremy Rodriguez, so I think we're going to see either right now or next, but Vargas has that same hitterish thing where he's in the box and he controls it. Good athlete, good back control, good barrel control, which you guys can definitely see on those opposite field tanks. Oh, Morabito. Yo, Morabito is really fun, guys. Morabito is like built like a football player. He's like a supreme athlete, but they're waiting for him to kind of get the swing and miss out of his game. But he's really fun. And he, I always get confused. Are him or Reimer, the drafting Mark fans? Uh, Reimer. Reimer's a drafting Mark fan. But yeah, Morabito, he hasn't gotten to his power yet in the minor leagues, but he had, I think, 21 saves last year, uh, 21 steals last year, in like 50 games across all levels. Really, really, really good athlete. And, that, and the Mets drafted him in the second round for the comp pick. I think they actually got for Noah Syndergaard, which is really funny. Oh, really? But, yeah, they paid him way over slot to sign him out of high school. He was, he was a uh, Vatek commit. I'm pretty sure he's a D.C. area guy. I have it in my notes, though. I think you're right about that one. Yeah, right? They're a good baseball program. Solid, at least. ACC. He was a double checking. Yeah, Virginia Tech commit with the comp pick for Noah Syndergaard. That's insane. And baseball families. Dad played baseball at JMU, and his uncle was a draft pick for the Chicago White Sox, which we love that. We love baseball families. Oh, Yeesh. All right, but he has a lot of swing and miss in his game. I don't know if he's ever seen 102 before, so what are you going to do? But, uh, Mark, question for you in the chat. Uh, what inspired you to do YouTube and commit to it full-time? I've been contemplating doing YouTube videos, but never been able to commit. Any tips? I watched guys, and they looked like they had a fun life, and it looked like a lot of fun. They got to travel, be friends and stuff, and I was like, that seems cool. I would like to be able to make videos to be able to go places, and then I started doing it. Ooh. Start. This is Rylan Thomas. Rylan Thomas is a really fun prospect, guys. He was USC, and the, the Mets signed him way under slot because I think he was a, he was a college senior. 
And he, but he's like he and he's an amazing outfielder. I think he got the Mets gold Mets uh, full um, Gold Glove award in the system last year. But he has an insane hit tool. He was like twice as many walks as strikeouts last year in all levels. And even when he got, that was mostly at Brooklyn and St. Lucie. But then he got called up to Binghamton and was a big time player for them down the stretch to take him to the championship. I want to say he was yeah hit 350 in the month uh, the month he played in Binghamton after his promotion. And just, like, he makes contact with everything, which is kind of a good test right now, seeing 102 against a guy who makes contact with everything. That's pretty cool. But Brandon just saw a guy in a DJ Stewart jersey. Brandon, shout out you for watching this stream while you're in the ballpark. That's sick. Ooh. Damn. 100 is crazy. I can't believe this guy's throwing 103 miles an hour. Got some pieces from the Padres, huh? Yeah, yeah. That was a, the Padres got nothing. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I tweeted it. For, for, what, a, a year? Uh, it was 114 games. Uh, 214 games, they won 109, 105. Yeah, good job by the Padres. Asset management. Rylan Thomas, contact with everything. Yeah, Marco gets the first to third. Guys, we, we got to be excited about the Mets system right now. This is, you guys are seeing depth of a system we've never seen Ball in players. our lives. Ball players. Ball players up and down. Like, we're, this is also going to be the first year in a while where we're going to see the Mets minor league teams actually win games, which is going to be crazy relevant because we never win games. Our minor league teams get fucking smoked. Look at the records for, like, Brooklyn, Binghamton, Syracuse. Brooklyn's always been, actually been okay. We're usually good there. But look at the records for St. Lucie, Syracuse, and Binghamton the last few years. We get housed. We win, like, 30 games a year. It's Binghamton. embarrassing. Huh? It's a Binghamton last year. Look, Sprout. Sprout's coming in next inning. You guys, Brandon Gang. Sprout has not yet. Yeah, very gangly. He hasn't pitched professionally yet. You guys are going to see some gas from Brandon Sprout. He, like, he did the, I'm going to talk about him when he comes in next inning, but we'll see. Who's, uh, who's up right now? Oh, Jeremy Rodriguez. Hell yeah. Guys, Jeremy Rodriguez is a prospect. We should be, like, as excited about anybody in the system. He's an 18-year-old. He's breaking into the back end of the top 100 list. Fan graphs and baseball perspectives. We got him for two months of Tommy Pham. And he's the kind of guy who, like, could really profile and just take a jump. He's he, like a baby. He's 18. I know. He's a kid. Good peas. Good peas. Good peas. Let's go. Hitherish, baby. Per Matt Eddy. Hitherish. Good peas. Oh, he's going for two. That's right. Wow. Good hop. Good hop, Jeremy. Got some Rodriguez notes over here. Uh, I said on the podcast, but Eric Longenhagen of uh, Fangraphs comped him to Jet Williams and Colton Emerson for where he stacks up as a prospect at his age. And those two are both major prospects. That's pretty serious. And I said on the podcast too, but 19% chase rate would have been the top one percentile of Major League Baseball players last year. Same as Alex Bregman, which is incredible. Brandon, currently watching the game in the ballpark, way in line. Food. Yeah, you got. if you can get a James Wood or Dylan Cruz autograph, that's amazing. Yeah. Let's see it. Who's up now? Who's up now? Another lefty. Is this Ronald Hernandez? I think it is. No. No? You sure? James Perozo. I think it was Hernandez. Perozo. Oh, it was Perozo. Vincent Perozo. Perozo's a big time. The Mets are really excited him from a power perspective. And I guess it, and he's struggled in defense, so cool that he is playing first now because they, they believe in his left-handed power bat. Major bat speed. Uh, what else I got over here on him? Do you have anything on him? Where is it? I have some notes on him somewhere. Vincent Perozo. Yeah. 30% K rate, though, last year, so it's a little bit. But again, huge power and lefty, lefty, lefty hitter, righty in the Bang. field. Okay. <laughs> Not dead yet. Mojo. What are you thinking, Mojo? We got to get Mojo on camera at some point. Let's go. Harlan Susana, 2 0. Mojo. Mojo's staring at us. Mojo's no idea what we're doing right now. Mark's dog sitting, our, our, uh, our buddy, who also is our attorney's dog right now, and like he lives a very pampered life in a beautiful Greenpoint apartment with a loving mother and father, and now he's just hanging out with us, streaming the breakout game, and we're going to watch college basketball all day after this. Just some dudes. Just, Mojo's, Mojo's going to get some dude time this weekend, which he doesn't really get that often, which is going to be kind of fun. But also, I want to tweet the stream before Spro comes in from my account. Yoosh, 101. You know what? That's a tailing fastball, too, from Susana. That's crazy. That's tough for a lefty to get around on. Go home and go running away from you? God damn. I, I can't believe that, that uh, Jesus Baez put one 112. I oh, saw them off. Drop, 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 drop. Yeah. Oh, nice play. Let's go. Safe. Nice. Good play, Jeremy. Get back. Oh, my God. Holy yeah. shit. I mean, it was 101. Jeez. Infield was in. That's insane. The infield was in. Infield in <laughs> Why is the infield in the spring breakout game? Baseball. Let's go. That's, that, that's weak sauce. That, that, I almost, that's, that's like almost Bush League. Infield in the spring breakout almost. game. Almost. 
I mean, just give Perozo a hit. The Nationals are the, one of the most Bush League organizations in Major League Baseball, though, so I understand that for their perspective. Guys, who's your sleeper team to win the national championship? I don't know if it's a sleeper anymore, but I was telling Mark before, I really think it's Auburn. I've been with you. This is the only team that's played South Carolina. They're freaky good. They have, because, like, the big thing for March, again, all the baseball talk you guys are hearing us talk about basketball right now. The big thing for March is, like, you can win without hitting threes, I think, but, like, I still want you to hit your threes. You can play defense, and you have multiple guys that can put the ball in the basket in isolation. Auburn has that. They have tons of fun guards. They play really good defense. A lot of guys that can shoot. They're bad free throw team though, right? Isn't that their thing? No, they're okay. Oh, they're good. Okay, never mind. I might be thinking of somebody else. Might be thinking of Tennessee, but ten- uh, and also UConn and Houston are the two best teams. Yeah, UConn and Houston are freaky. Yeah. Purdue also has weird witchcraft vibes this year, which I think they could be fun just because they've been so bad. But guys, this is Ronald Hernandez hitting right now for the Mets. He was the other piece in the uh, David Robertson trade along with Marco Vargas, switch hitting catcher, which is kind of crazy, and. Uh, he had the second highest international bonus for the Marlins in the 2021 class behind Yiddy Cape, who was like always known as like their best prospect, yada, yada, even though he's not really that good. But he had a ridiculous like 50 to 40 walk to strikeout ratio last year, which is kind of unheard of in the complex. Just like a very advanced hitter for a 19 year old. He just turned 20 after the season ended. He's probably another guy who's going to be in St. Lucie this year. Probably, I guess, catching if he's catching this game over Perozo. But really, really fun prospect in terms of being an advanced hitter at this time of age. This, this age for him. Hate Walgreens team. I don't know what that means, Phil. What's the Walgreens team? Nationals. Oh, yeah. F- hate them. It's funny. Our, even the town we grew up in, Mark and I, our high school and like our youth baseball teams, we had the same logo as them, like the W. No, they copied us. We were there first. Yeah, amen, amen we were. West, shout out Westfield. But uh, Mark, your neighbors still play basketball upstairs at 70. Yeah, yeah. Mark's, neighbor, Mark's neighbors kill him. But now Mark's going to get payback having a dog for two weeks. So that's going to be a big part of this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get him riled up, and I'm just going to hang out with <laughs> yeah. Mark. Also, uh, ooh, that's, that's, that's 102. 102, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know what, though? Why stand in there against it? Yeah, it's hard. That's really hard. And also, that's, like, that's kind of a front door in the hands. That's that, that's that tailing fastball at the arm side. That's a really tough pitch for a lefty to hit when he locates it like that. But, Joe, I kind of agree with you. I feel like that these, one of these guys, like Montgomery or Snell, just has to be a giant at this point. Like, no one else even makes sense. Yeah, I literally can't believe we got two guys who are like now in our top 15 prospects for two months of David Robertson, who was bad. Big at bat for Alex Ramirez here against Velocity. Eey, let's see it, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. Yikes. Good. Doesn't want to face him. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Shout out to you guys hanging out with us watching this. These five innings have kind of really steamed by. It's going really fast. Also because there's just so, so much great pitching from the Mets player development machine. But, yeah, shout out to you guys hanging out. Active chat. Love it. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh, wow. 87. That has to be the changeup. That was just a little string. I thought that was. I you think that was, was slider? Strong. Yeah. Might be another type of slider. It didn't spin, though, like the slider. The slider before had the glove side action when yeah, you threw one earlier. I saw the changeup on this righty righty because yeah. you just don't really throw that pitch either. Yeah, there's also kind of a, a bit of a weird angle. It's more offside, so it's hard to see that. And more low. See, that's the slider. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was the same speed. Yeah, yeah. But I think the same, but a different movement. Nah, I think it was the same. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just where it started. Yeah, you could. We'll see. Oh, they're going oh. minor league. Really? That, make, that makes sense. And also, those guys are used to the ABS. You can't really do the major league umps. Joe West, ABS, he'd say no. Be like, I made the call. I mean, J- Joe, West, me? Joe West said at the end of the year, there was not one missed call last year in Major League Baseball. Like, shout out to the umpires, because they, they didn't miss one. Don't check the challenges. Yeah, this is timing pretty well, because this is going to end for the last 10 minutes of this game. But, yeah, it's, yeah it doesn't really matter. Well, it's going to be halftime when it ends. But. Yeah. But <laughs> Either a slider or a cutter, the MLB hat. Maybe it was a slider and a cutter, but yeah, I don't know. I think they're going to let the... Uh... Mets hit in the bottom of the seventh because it's a cool <laughs> showcase game if they're winning. I have no idea. Maybe it's an option, but that'd be kind of weird for the Nationals if I'm being honest. I actually bet probably because they probably want all the guys to pitch. Maybe. Uh, what? Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'll get to your question on the next commercial. I'm going to fill up some water at halftime and answer that before Sprout pitches because I think we should be very excited about the Mets. And this, like, it's kind of going to determine whether or not the Mets are really going to be contenders for the next three to five years, whether or not a lot of these guys come up and actually contribute. Whether it be impact or just actually be, like, one to three win players in the major league roster for free. It's very important. But let's see this pitch first. Come on. Good piece. Uh, all right. There's a 102 put in play. Good for him. All right. Get for Pro this inning. Get pumped. Hi, all. What's up, everybody? How we doing? 
How we doing stream? How we doing chat? Gotta open up this blind. It's hot in here. It's because the air's like getting getting stuck. What's up, Mojo? Mojo, say hi. Come here. Good stretch. Nice. What's up, dude? Come here. Mojo, Mojo. Hey, buddy. I miss you. You guys see Mojo? Yeah, yeah I can not see really, him. barely. And they'll be able to, I think. Mojo. Maybe not. I want to get this question. Uh, duh. Can you guys explain to those who don't? I got to try and talk up now. I'm not on the mic. Can you guys explain to those who don't why you're so pumped about the Mets prospects and how in a few years they could have a major impact on the roster and how that affects payroll? James kind of talked about it last episode. You just kind of need some free guys every once in a while to like do pro like have good production. That's kind of why like oh oh my god that would have we would have won the game down nineteen different. Um, if you look at all like the good teams in baseball, like you do just kind of get cheap production. Like you need cheap production somewhere. Like even if it's the bullpen or like a back end starter, Mets just don't have any right now. And James talked about it a lot in the last episode, but. Right now, there's like a lot of guys that are major league player caliber guys yeah. in this farm system. That's something that the Mets haven't had in a long time. It's also a big thing where it's like when you're – I'm trying to think of how to describe this. Like when you have this pipeline of position players and pitchers coming up through the system, then you don't have to spend the $10, 12 $15 million a year on the Eduardo Escobar, yeah. the Mark Hanna, yeah. on the Sean Manaya because you have a player in your system Good way to put who it. does that for James free. James McCann. Yeah, the James McCann because you have catchers who could just be horrible yeah. already for free. So like <laughs> – now you've suddenly spent $30 million less, but now I have $30 million. Now I can actually shop for the superstar. It's going to change the team's bottom line. Like, that's the key, and that's kind of why where its excitement comes from. That's like, oh, Michelle Margot, what's up? Um, <laughs> Drew Gilbert, spit that riz, kid. Now she's married, sadly. Yeah, I know. You see that video over there, right? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. You guys ever see that video of Michelle Margot? Flip out on a guy yeah. doing a YouTube video in Times Square? Getting super mad. She's like, you messed with the wrong person. He's like, are you threatening me? Bro! How fast was that? Show me 97. All right. What are you doing, SNY? Sleeping. But uh, even before you get back to answering this question, just talk about Sprout for a second. Sprout, the Mets did like the entire crew. Let's go! Come on! They 98. Right? That's fucking awesome. Go on, pumped up. The Mets did the throwing seeds at Gilbert talking to Margot. Oh, they're all definitely yeah. like, she's hot. Woo! Like, <laughs> but, um, we're going to embarrass them. <laughs> Sprout, they, did, they literally did the exact Christian Scott thing, but they get to Brandon Sprout. It was similar at Florida. It wasn't a reliever, but he was like more of a sinker slider guy. And they were like, we're, you're going to throw a four-seam fastball because we see your arm slide and we know you're over the top. Oh, that curveball is insanely gross. Kevin Maid? But nice. he's getting he's, he's getting to 100 miles an hour with 18, 19 inches of inverted vertical break, which is what we say when you guys have like a writhing fastball, like one that can lift the top of the zone. And you guys saw at the top of the zone, that fastball. Like Brandon Sprout, I really wouldn't be surprised if he's in double A by the middle of this year. And next year, like Joe DeMeo saying right now in the broadcast, that he's like someone who's in the mess rotation. Like he... If he's a top 100 prospect next year, I won't even be surprised. Nice oh, yeah. pitch. That was the two-seamer that he still has in the repertoire. Nice. Too, the back door against the righty. Oh, this is like... If I, this was the guy I was most excited to see today, <laughs> and he looks incredible. This is like spiritual for you. <laughs> oh! This is gross! That was the slider. <laughs> Holy, he's showing four pitches right now. Guys aren't even close. That was such a dominant inning from Brandon Spro. It was I got I got messed up trying to. Drew Gilbert doing it. the fucking like yeah, yeah, flex yeah. the guns position yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Get the chest going. Love it. He knows. Oh my god. YouTube Michelle Margot Edwin D has interview clothing boo boo. Yo, Brandon Spro is almost through a fucking immaculate inning. Did you guys see that shit? He's incredible. Dominant Brandon Spro. Hell yeah. Let's go. But. Yeah, back to what we were talking about before from Mud Dunn. It's also just like, there also there, there there is the opportunity to have impact players in the system. Like Jet could be a star. Drew Gilbert could easily be like a four to five win player with like the well roundedness in his game. Like Acuna still has crazy ceiling, but he has crazy floor as well. And it's, these pitchers, like you guys are seeing these pitchers, especially like the fact that we have I think two pitchers under contract heading into next season. We kind of need two or three of these guys to at least be back end rotation guys if we want to compete for the next two years. And we're like when all these we could be spending a lot of money and having some fun again. So. That's kind of the key with all this, and that's what I think this farm system is putting us in position to do. Uh, the Mets' blue jerseys have, had, have always had that orange trim on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're getting rid of the white trim on the black jersey. Around the, it, it looks so bad. I need a Brandon Sprout video. Why? Come on. What are we doing? Pitching Ninja. Give me something. 
Spro- Sprout Swarm? Nothing. Hang on, I'm just going to tweet from my personal. How are you guys liking the spring breakout game? Is this cool? Yeah, what do you guys think? What's the thoughts on how the spring breakout's looking? Mojo, no one's here. Hey, Mojo. You're good. It's a loud building. So this is a real dry spot right now. Double commercials. Yeah, yeah, two commercials. But yeah, I mean, ask some questions, guys. Talk, call some. Yeah, this is your, whatever. This is your chance. Say anything. We'll answer anything about baseball right now, or just about us. Anything, anything at all. Someone asked what we have for lunch. It's a solid lunch. I still got a chicken cutlet left. Yeah. I'm definitely excited for some of the story dinner tonight. Mets rookie of the year winner. It's gonna add to that next year. Drew Gilbert, baby. At the stadium and not even watching the game. Oh. Uh, great idea, love you. Yeah, this spring break I think is a really good idea. Like it's just it's also fun to see these prospects all getting together. Yeah. Like these are guys at all different levels but that you expect to be on this team together one day. So it's just cool that like Colin Howe can hang out with Drew Gilbert. Andre Lara. Another oh, big is. boy. I wanna say he's Ecuadorian. I'm gonna be the show good, Mark. Uh, ah, it's the same. I got no. I have no real take on it. Junior Tillian, up at the plate. Ooh, this broke up to ninety eight and ninety nine. Ninety eight, I think I saw. Uh, but yeah, movie the show feels pretty much the same. I don't know actually how much I'm gonna play, honestly. Yeah. It, there's nothing new. I've played this game now, the same game for like six years in a row. Junior Tillian up the middle. Oh, not hard. Nope. Good play by the shortstop. Like that, smooth. That's like Junior Tillian. He's just he's like they they trust he's gonna stay up the middle, and he just is like a funky little athlete. Cliff. Clifford. Yeah. Drew's got hand tat. Drew Jets got hand tattoos. God oh, damn. Yeah. He had it up. Any fun fantasy baseball sleepers? Kobe. Uh, Hunter Brown. Um, who else? Hey, tell me how big your league is, and I'll tell you sleepers. Just and go on, do throw us another chat too. William Lugo's a thick boy. Thick boy. He's big time. Girth. What's up, the gaming Texan? I do think it's pretty funny and cool that they're just like fuck it. Any prospect talk, it's per Joe DeMeo. They're yeah, not. They're like no pipeline. That's, that's nothing the last else. Prospect, yeah, no, I think it's, it's cool and funny. Yeah, because like we know him. Yeah, just Joe, like yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe's a hell of a guy. Yeah, he really is. That's filthy. Yikes. Pretty. Uh, sorry, William Lugo. Uncompetitive at bat. Big boy by William. Twelve guy head to head. Definitely Hunter Brown sleeper. Um, I think the bats. I'm always good with the pitching sleepers, never the hitting sleepers. Clifford's two years younger than me and he looks like a beast. Yeah, you're telling us. He's like seven years younger than us. <laughs> He's a monster. When we graduated, uh, we graduated high school. He was just getting started in middle school. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, here's your boy, Vargas. Marco. Oh. Some are not a dice league. Yeah, no, that's it. Again, I love I, I just I love Hunter Brown because the Astros just don't really miss, and he has a good fastball, two good breaking balls, and again, he's gonna play with one of the best teams, one of the best player developments in OK Ballpark. Uh, got my list here. I got some sleeper stuff, but sh- I mean, like depending on where where your league thinks about Wyatt Langford, like he's probably gonna walk into that team this year and just be a monster right away. Um, well, sleeper. I'm blanking on sleepers right now. I've been, I've been so deep doing dynasty stuff. Yeah, I'm like I know. missing my redraft right now. I haven't done a draft this year, so I don't even know. We're doing ours on Monday. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever day, I yeah, assume. Yeah, it's Monday night. But, um, yeah, Joe, Joe is a really good prospect guy. He's, he's so he's so deep in it. Like, I, he, like, he takes in, I think, so little major leagues. He just does so much prospect, which <laughs> is crazy. But uh, Nolan Jones, think I'm at 60 or something. You like him for fantasy? I would like Nolan Jones if I was playing in a categories league, but not in a points league, because he's probably going to steal 40 bags. And I think he is totally legit. He's also the same age as Juan Soto, which is so insane for me to think about. He's had like 300 major Good AB, Marco Vargas again. Oh, Marco Vargas. 0-2. Oh, 2 do- oh, Yeah, 0-2. Oh, Dog. Dog-like traits. So I think next inning after Sprout now, we're going to see Ziegler, which is fun. To close it out. Yeah. Calvin Ziegler came back last year after having a bo- surgery for bone spurs in his elbow. I wish we had commercials for our podcast. Would have been nice. Would have been cool if we ever had that when we had backing. But, um... Yeah, Ziegler came back last year through one inning at St. Lucie. He struck out the side and hit 97 miles an hour. Back. I want to see more Bila do something here. Ooh, I like it, Johan. Do, um, Colby, DM me on Twitter. I'll get you some fancy baseball stuff. 
I'll, I'll be, I'm just my mind's blank right now. I'm just all I'm thinking about prospects because I was prepping for this and then just doing di- a lot of dynasty content. But hit me up on Twitter. Ooh. I'll get you some prospects. Let me get you some sleepers, not prospects, regular old sleepers. Sorry for not getting to it now. Maybe a silly question. Is Chur- I think Churio probably is starting in the yeah, base. Yeah, he's starting. Because he, he's been doing all of his reps in the spring with a starting outfield. Like, he's been, like, on Christian Yellow's hip, which makes me think he's going to start. And they gave him a real contract. Wow, nice play. Who is that short? I don't know. Good glove, though. Mm-hmm. Nice. Cruz, whoever's Cruz. Is that Zach Littell might be good. I'm I'm like I'm pissed off because I just I Armando should, Cruz, I think. Yeah. I literally just dropped Zach Littell in my deepest dynasty league that rosters nine hundred players and I dropped him this week for no reason. I looked at spring training, I was like, Oh guy's actually good. And free agency opened today and someone picked him up the second it opened. And I was pissed. But appreciate all you guys hanging out here. Drop a like on the stream. We're at thirty three. Wanna see it hit forty and uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the podcast on the YouTube side as well. Yeah, definitely please subscribe. The uh, YouTube channel is big for us right now. And we're actually doing pretty well in there. Better yeah. than basically all the other Mets podcasts. So especially, pretty, f- especially for the subscriber count we have. Yeah, it's really cool to see that. Really cool you guys have been supporting as, Almost like we got as, a YouTube uh, guy. What? It's like almost like we have a YouTube guy that can yeah. help get views. Yeah, it's just crazy. But yeah. Really been cool all support we've gotten like the last few months since we don't work for the Mets anymore. So I appreciate everyone sticking by us and like helping us be able to do this this year and like still have a really good time and deliver a lot of really good content and hopefully make a little bit of money. Yeah. That's it go. All of them together. And we're just pumped for the Mets. I'm so pumped for baseball. Can't wait for real games. Yeah. It was probably cool being at St. Lucie and actually being at games. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun to be back in a ballpark. I was definitely jealous to be in the ballpark. Have a beer. Yeah. Two weeks from yesterday it was opening day. Like it's happening. Like we're here. Yeah. Well, in in the YouTube league that I have, they're like, oh, we'll just like do the expansion draft like later this week. It's like game start on opening day is Wednesday. Literally. Yeah. And we're we're gonna we're going to the other half this week for with Eno Nick, right? What day is that? Twenty uh, Wednesday Thursday, or two twenty first twenty second. Okay, one of those. But I'm assuming it's at night, right? No, daytime. I think it's like three o'clock. I'm gonna be fucking strung out from that uh, <laughs> Korean game. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm gonna be up streaming that. They're also oh really gonna be up yeah. six a.m. They're yeah. uh that's cool. Everyone watch Mark stream at six a.m. But they're going to be re-showing the games at 3. That's kind of their thing. So Mets do his part. Thank you guys for supporting. Mets content community Appreciate is driving. You. Right here. Out here grinding. Would you ever draft Alvarado? I would definitely not draft Alvarado because, first of all, Rat. He's a good pitcher, but Rat. Rat. I have such a meme ready for him when he comes to a game this year. That yeah. massive South African Rat. <laughs> oh, yeah, Can't yeah. wait to post it every time he pitches against the Mets. But um, the Phillies just will not let him be the closer. Every time that you think he's going to be the closer, they don't let you actually give him the reins. And they have Orion Kirkering, they have Sir Anthony Dominguez, and they have Jeff Hoffman, who are all disgusting. No, TJ. So I just, I really just don't think that he's going to be the closer at all. Like, he'll be, he'll mix in as a closer, but in terms of fantasy baseball, like, I don't think he's going to save 25 games. Ziegler's a strong dude. He's, yeah. Ziegler's also a crazy story for Ziegler when the Mets were drafting him. So he was a, a prospect coming out of Canada, 2021 draft. But we still have travel restrictions because of COVID then. So scouts couldn't go and see him. So winter of his last year at high school, he transferred to a, an all-baseball academy in Florida that on their website, I say the quote because it's insane. The high school, it's called, they call themselves a baseball academy, and said they prioritize player development at the high school, which is just absolutely hilarious. It's like IMG. Yeah. And he was also an Auburn commit. Did you know that? No, Ziegler. So big time. So he, the SEC. stuff, the stuff is crazy. It's just about him staying healthy. He's put on, it looks like. 30 pounds since the Mets drafted him because he was a string beat. 225 is... Whoa, watch your lips. I think he was 180, 190 when they drafted him, which is crazy. Go find out. Yeah, but... Yeah, he, he just struggled with injuries a lot. Like, he had a bone spur. I think he had, like, a an oblique thing or something or maybe a shoulder, but, like, he throws so hard for how... Like, his size. Nice pitch. And he's got good good heart on that. And it's like... He it, he has a really good splitter, too. I hope we see that here. I haven't noticed that this that bad, but that's, like, his out pitch. So I really, really hope we see that because, like... Fastball splitter, change like slider, like that's oh wow, gas him up, bang, that's the recipe. So this this year is gonna go a long way to seeing if he's actually a starter or a reliever. But even if he's a reliever, he looks disgusting, so it don't matter. That was gonna be my question. He's probably a reliever like, yeah, right now. There's a really good chance. Yeah. How many Milo? How many games do you guys think he'll attend this season? Um, Mark lives closer, so he'll probably. I mean, all, it all depends if I actually wind up getting a job or not, yeah. or if I could just make it through this year just doing baseball, that's true. just surviving. But if I just do baseball this year. I'll probably go get to at least 40. Depends on how many free tickets we get to. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to pay to go there anymore. <laughs> I'm like, it's like a, it's like a pride thing. But I don't know. I don't know. We don't have, we don't have connections to get tickets anymore either we'll from see. the inside. We'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna go to a lot. It's just energy. We're gonna do like a whole bit this year on our Instagram where we're, I'm gonna bring crazy food into that stadium. 
Like, I'm going to bring full three-course dinners. It's going to be awesome. Pitch. Soups, sandwiches, salads, See, everything. like, that's where we could get, like, a sponsor. Like, I brought a factor meal to the game or something like that. Yeah, we or could like, get a sponsor like that. Hello Fresh. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, that's, that's the brain going. Yeah. Oh, we got a challenge. I Here thought it go. was a strike. That's a strike. Oh, hi. Zeke was injured his bicep tendonitis, which is scary. Especially that with bone spurs. So it's, like, probably had a little bit to do with each other, which is scary. Either of you high on Kyle Harrison. I, I'm sneaky really high on Kyle Harrison. He just, like, his fast... Ooh. Ooh. Wow! Ooh. That was a slider. That was Ooh. gross. A lot of drop. A lot of drop. Again, the stuff is amazing on Ziegler. But um, Harrison, the, I'm behind on him because the Giants seem like they really, really trust him right now. Oh. That one got away. the way. But the fact that that Giants organization trusts him, he has workload back up that get to, like, 120, 130, 140 this year. Fastball's amazing. He's their, like, number two. He like, might be their number one. Yeah. <laughs> Who is one? Oh, Logan Webb. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, like, their number two. But um, yeah, I trust nice. him. And Get on his I hands. also, uh, Kobe asked. I also trust Sonny Gray. The injury right now is the thing, and that's kind of always his vibe. Like Sonny Gray, like he's gonna be a 130, 140, 150 inning guy. Like last year was the aberration, but he's disgusting. He's really never not been great. No. Whenever good, he's been healthy, like good besides the Yankees. Good defense too. Big ballpark. Shit yeah. division. And they're like, gonna let him pitch yeah. when he's healthy. Oh, they're they're gonna love to throw Sonny Gray into the eighth for no reason sometimes. Yeah. But uh, Joe, you guys are probably really tired of City Field food. Definitely, but. It was free. It was free, so I, I... I didn't care, yeah. There were some games we literally went to just to go eat. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. go eat and leave. Yeah, I would I was just show up. Like, we weren't working. We were just show up, have our food, and just get out of there. Because we're like, oh, and also just like to be in the ballpark, be around. But, um, I mean, I, I really... My vibe with the Brie Bull lady, that that really helped me a lot last year. She was, Good she pitch. was such a gem, Nancy. Zeke was impressive. Fastball's got zip. I'm happy the Mets... Apparently, the Mets were between Ziegler and Wilkin Ramos for this last inning, and Wilkin Ramos is nuts. He's like a pure sidewinder. Oh, really? They picked him up from the Pirates. He lost some velocity, but he has, like, cool shape on his sinker nice. doing that sidewinding. Zico looks so good. Hey, what? Not a lot of hard contact, except against... Blade? Blade. And Hamill, kind of. And Hamill, yeah. Ooh. I can't believe Jesus Baez hit the ball harder than Nolan Arnaz ever hit the ball. Yeah. That's incredible. I don't know what I don't know if that's good for him or bad for Nolan. Both. <laughs> oh. Nah. Come on, Matt. Have the umpire called him out on a swing? <laughs> yeah. That he wants to go home. Yeah. I wonder if the Mets are gonna hit next inning. But hey, either way, like shout out you guys. Thanks for hanging out. This is the first time we've ever done a live stream from this. We're gonna try this probably a little more during the season for games that don't have Gary, Keith, and Ron on them. But yeah, happy happy it worked out the first time. Nice Woo! pitch. 97. Guess him up, Cal. That's game. That game? That's game. Yeah, it's a one. It's game. That's a win. All right. That's prospect dominant. Hey, shout out to you guys. Did you guys know that John and Vida were taking over the official podcast themselves and you guys left? So that's the end of the stream. <laughs> shout out you guys. Uh, appreciate you guys hanging out in the chat. But really fun. Going to try and do this more. Thanks for the questions. Thank you for the one. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate you. And yeah, subscribe, like the stream, and get ready. We'll probably have another episode later this week. Peace out, guys. Later, guys. I'm going to wait till I see the wave on here. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. I'll take it.